As most of you know, I'm Mary Ann Texley and longtime educator in the Winona area, public schools and other places. <laughs> um, I'm also the parent of three Windhawks who are doing great things because of the great education they received while they were here at Winona Area Public Schools. Um, I just want the board to slow down. Just, just stop it. Just stop the roll. Just slow down. Um, this is this is a issue that we have rolled around for years in Winona, and I was a part of many many task forces and design teams and what have you, and and plans that were set aside and back to the drawing board, and and we're still here. We're still here, trying to figure out what's best in the interest of kids and families. And I really feel very strongly that this has come about too quickly. And I think with the last couple of failed referendums, the message has been strong that the community is not happy with some of the things that are being brought forward. Um, 
my big thing is, you know, not only to come and complain, but to, you know, provide a solution to, to, to give us a couple of ideas on maybe a different route to go. Besides just slowing down, taking a breath and just, you know, it, it clears the mind. It really does, you know, and I'm not opposed to change. I like change myself. And when there's change, there are problems, but there are also new opportunities and new things that come from that change. I'm not sure the community is ready for this big of a change. And um, and I just feel like it needs a little bit more thought, a little bit more dis discussion. Um, I listened to the teachers. I think that's why I'm here tonight is because I listened to the teacher's stories the other night and everything they said was true. Everything they said was true. It came from the heart. It came from their passion of their um, lifelong learning um, mantra, and they want what's best for kids. It's not just because they're from a certain school or they want to be at a certain school or it's more convenient for their families. They're, the problems and the issues that they brought forward are real. They are real. Um, I had three kids and my kids are spread out, so they're all over the place. But we didn't have the two-tiered busing then. Now you have that on top of everything else and you want parents to be involved with the school and how can a parent be involved with three schools at once and give it the time that they want to give and that the school wants them to be able to participate in as well. I also feel strongly that the district needs to get a strategic plan in place. I feel that if the time and energy is focused on getting a one to three, two to four, three to five year school plan in place. The community can wrap around a plan and a roadmap. Um, year one, this is going to happen. This is the cost. Year two, this is going to be our priorities. Here are the costs for that. Year three, you know, in each year, building upon um, where you want to go, it's not going to happen overnight. The decision, I just have to be real honest with you, the decision to put in the geothermal in Jefferson and WK, I'm not a fan because I think it has crippled the district in terms of being creative and being able to move forward with other ideas. Let's not compound things by adding more angst on our teachers and our families and our kids. Let's just slow down. There, it, there is some something good about just take, taking a step back and thinking about it and producing something that people can follow and know what's going to happen. And I, I feel like um, the community can wrap around a, a referendum at that point. I personally, personally, I've never voted no on a referendum until the last two referendums here. I, I just, I just couldn't do it um, with my past experience and knowing um the financial constrictions that the, that the district is under, we just can't keep adding more and more to that. So I really hope that you take the time to take a breath and to honor the people that have volunteered to be on these very difficult committees and honor their work and listen to the teachers and listen to the community because I think it would serve us all so much better. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Marianne. David? Hi, David. No thoughts. I don't do this very often. Bruce, a little history lesson. How will you can answer this simple question? Who was our first president? Anybody want to answer that one? That's what I'm asking. Somebody on this board to ask you that, that question. Real easy, real simple. David, part of the public comments that we just I know, but this is why I wanted to that I will go to the other option. This is something everybody should know. I'm just asking this just this one a simple question, and then I'll go to what I want to talk about. I just want somebody here to ask me who was their first president. Do we know the answer? 
We're not willing to. Shame on you. Our first president was John Smith, voted by the Continental Congress as our first president. George Washington sent him a letter, letter congratulating him on being the first president of this country. Now, to the issue of at hand. I looked at a lot of this, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of this in the paper and also on the radio and also through hearsay across the board, across the community. And what I'm seeing here is that the board has refused to bother to look at what the committee has set up and, and came up with. Due to the fact, why have a committee if you're not even going to bother to check out what the process, how much of each step is going to be? If you're not willing to do that, why have a committee? Why have them set up and do that for you? That's what they're there for. Instead, you went ahead and threw that aside and came up with your own plan, which I don't think is even worse than what the committee's plan was. And uh, I've been, I'm a life member of this community. I was born and raised here, went to Jefferson, went to Junior High downtown, and the Cedar High right here. And I still live in this community. And what I'm seeing right now as a board that's not listening to the community. The only time you care about what people think on the community is when you walk out there and get voted in, want to get voted in. None of you, I bet you, even better to walk your district to talk to people to find out what they have their opinions about. You can't answer any questions or come up with any ideas or spend any money until you ask them what they're feeling, what they're thinking. Until you do that, you're always going to be always going to have the bad side of this community on your side until you go out there and you talk to the people, knock on their doors and so forth and get their opinions. That's when you will get the community behind your back and will vote 100 percent for it. But until then, they will not. And that's why this board from previous boards to the current boards have had problems getting anything passed because you don't walk your districts to talk to the people. And thank you very much for the time. Oh, and one thing I got questions to ask is when are you going to be paid the $1 million you owe the technology fund? David. Hi, Hello. Uh, good evening, board members and superintendent. I come to for you tonight to ask that the board hit the pause button and take some time and reevaluate this big rush to do this grade level reconfiguration. To propose it in in uh, February. And the vote tonight is pretty rushed. There's a lot of unanswered questions out there. How much extra for busing? How much uh, is there for potential remodeling and re relocating programs in the district? As you know, I served on the facilities task force and the, the recommendation that we came up with is different than what's being voted on tonight. We looked at that option and felt that there would not be enough community support to, to entertain it. Plus the constant moving of kids every two years from one building to the next, to the next, to the next. Especially when you have a family with multiple children and multiple grades, you can't be at one school and be at the second and third school at the same time. Our superintendent has even cautioned and suggested that we need to get more firm prices and what it's gonna cost. So again, let's slow down, hit the pause button, answer these questions or get the answers to these questions and really think about this before it happens tonight. It's March, school starts in September. Is six months really gonna be an ample time to implement this and get everything figured out? 
Also remember, Jefferson and WK are going to be shut down after the last day of school, so teachers and staff won't be able to access them or do any work in them to prepare for this. You heard from your teachers and staff last week. I would hope that that would have some bearing in your decision tonight. So please, slow down. Don't rush it through tonight. We need a, as Marianne Texley said, we need to plan this out. We need a strategic plan for two to three years, three to five years, five to 10 years out. Not push something through tonight on a whim. One month is not enough to plan this. So please, hear our pleas, listen to the parents, listen to your staff, and re-examine your, uh, your uh, positions and do what's best for our kids and our families and our community. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is employee recognition. Yeah, I'd like to ask uh, Nolan Hammernick to, I'm gonna put him in the spotlight here for a moment. Nolan, if you'll come on up. I wanna introduce, uh, Nolan, go ahead. you can even take a, take a seat at the at the front table here for just a moment. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't know he was gonna put in the spotlight. Today, I wanna introduce Nolan uh, to the, to the board and, and to the uh, to the room tonight and, and uh, share a, share just a, a brief story. So Nolan Hammernick serves as an educational assistant at Winona Middle School. And uh, a few weeks ago, we had a a student who was choking on a grate during during lunch. And Nolan immediately stepped into action. He performed the Heimlich maneuver on the student. Uh, the story I heard, he gave him some some pretty good uh, uh, swift uh, strokes on the back too, and. Uh, was able to dislodge the grape and uh, and and I just want to commend Nolan for again his his courage his bravery and uh, his willingness to step in in a moment of uh, of urgent need and so Nolan I want to commend you and uh, and thank you for your service to the district and yeah. and and to to the young man so at least I give you a, give you a handshake here okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nola. Yeah, I appreciate the applause, guys. <laughs> um, next on our agenda, we have Bill Braun here, um, one of our high school teachers with his robotics team. And welcome to all of you. Can you just tell us who you've got with you tonight? Well, I'm going to let them introduce oh, themselves. I'm sure. But, okay. Um, uh, so I just thought it would be uh, good to. Um, you know, come and you know, kind of showcase the, the robotics as uh, really interesting. That uh, you know, it's like it's not necessarily a really well known program, and so like you know, what do we do? What are we about? And you know, give thanks to those that you know uh, support it. So uh, that's kind of our purpose of saying, hey, you know, uh, you know, we're we're here. We've got this great thing going, you know, for these uh, students, and um, you know, so I thought, you know, let's uh, get it out here. So. Um, we got some mentors back there that uh, are going to uh, stay in the background. That's okay. But uh, some outside community members that come in and help. And so um, we'll let uh, them kind of go through. I kind of gave them an outline. Think about these are things that we should talk about. And then let them talk. So. <laughs> Hello, my name is Anna Lisa Hogerson. I'm Ivy Starr. I'm David Eros. And we are part of the Winona Robotics team. We recently came, changed our name from uh, Ram Hawks to Chaotic Robotics because we felt chaos kind of encompassed more of who we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're living off of zip ties, duct tape, and a prayer. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> but um, we every year we get a new game for the robotics. And Ivy is going to explain this year's game. Okay, hello. This year's game is called Crescendo. It is a three versus three robot team game where you place these foam rings, yeah, these foam rings into these openings called amps. 
for points or shoot them into a speaker. Our robot can do both. Um, you also hang off a chain at the end of the game. And we are going for the amp, and we can, as of yesterday, hang off the chain. Which means that we can now accomplish all three main tasks in the game, yeah. which is not especially common for teams. Yeah. We have... So there's a lot of different things that we do here. Um, we go off, we all choose our jobs, we play with little things, we decide, like, who wants to try what, we try new things all the time. Uh, the different roles are designer, uh, which is self-explanatory, CAD, which is the online modeling of the robot, uh, fabricator, which is taking the raw materials and making them usable for us. Uh, there's the programmer, programming, that's Ivy. <laughs> The drive team, the ones who control the robot in the midst of the match. Um, we have the driver and coach. We have a human player this year, and the human players help either can help load the rings into the robot from a no touching uh, slot, or this year, which is different from all previous years, you can throw a ring. There's you have three rings and you get to throw them, uh, and you try and land them on a pole, and that'll get you extra points. Not to brag, but I got two of them once. Uh, <laughs> we also do uh, we also do some PR things. So we also get to do some work with social media, network with other teams. That can be pretty fun too. We've met a lot of really interesting people and we've learned a lot from talking to the other teams. Uh, and then we have um, five mentors currently and we're thankful for all of them. We have... We have Fernando Carrillo, Paul Melling, Roger Kulas, Jerry Benedict, and Mike Todd. So thank you to them. Um, so we, like I said before, we learn a lot of different skills, including how to catch something using, again, using a computer to design a thing. And then we either 3D print it, usually we 3D print it, um, or maybe we just draw it up in the dimensions that we need. Um, you can learn how to program. Several of us have learned bits and pieces of coding languages. That's been really interesting. Um, teamwork, which we like to think we're pretty good at. You know, that's up for personal interpretation, but we like to think we're pretty good at it. Uh, communication, again, we also, not to brag, think we're pretty good at it. <laughs> we, use, we learned how to use general tools, such as hammers, screwdrivers, wrenches, things that you'd find in your average garage. We also learned how to use heavy duty tools such as band saws. You know, we've used we've used a plasma cutter. Um, we've used 3D printers. Those things are much more elaborate and can take a lot more, a lot more time to fully master how to do, but our mentors always make sure that we nail it down. Um, we learn problem solving and critical thinking because things go wrong quite a bit. Um, we make a lot of mistakes and we need to quickly figure out how to how can we fix this? How can we make it better than it is before? Or even if it's working, how can we make it better? Um, we've used some specialty tools like laser cutter, plasma color, welding, that's me, uh, and 3D printer. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a generous amount of sponsors for our team and just take home to thank them. Uh, we have Miller Ingenuity um, from the Seven Rivers Robotic Coalition, we, we get Ashley and Math and Construction. Thank you to them. We have Watlow, Fastenal, RTP, Windcraft, Peerless Chain, Miller Scrap, BCS, Train, Dominoes, and Excel Images. So thank you to all of them. Um, our competition is April 4th and 5th. If you guys want to check that out, that will be in the Cross. Uh, which center is that? No, the Cross Center. The, okay, the Cross Center. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, a robot this year is may, is a swerve drive, and that means it can move in any direction and even spin um, while moving. This is so, our first year being able to have a swerve drive. So if I move to the right, it can spin like that, but then it can also go move. It is really, really helpful um, to have, just to work on as a team. And the top of a robot can actually move down. And then that's where we'd load the note into. Would you like to see the note load? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
and it stays in there, and then we can go up here. And then we can go up here and we can deploy it into the amp. And then we can sell the motors. <laughs> We would show you how it shoots, but I don't think anyone's in the mood to get that. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean <laughs> shoot it right over my head. <laughs> Do we have a little bit? There's no. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think, yeah. 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 So, okay. I'll go. Shoot it at me. No. Shoot it at me. Point it down. Lower. 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 It's as low as it goes. Oh. That's okay. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. And a lot of this robot has been plasma cut. That is honestly one of our saving graces is it's the plasma cutter and generally just the tech the tech area but in the school like the industrial tech area, that is one of our saving graces. Like Jerry Benedict is the uh is the industrial tech teacher here and he's been amazing, like absolutely perfect for all of need, like the top of most of this, any of those things that you see that are painted are almost all are almost all plasma cut. Like it's been so helpful, and just a lot of the stuff he does is so helpful for the team. And that whole area is, and I'm really excited for this year's competition. How about you, Ani? I'm, I'm also really excited for this competition, especially for the like to actually see our robot. You know, with the swerve drive, that was a very monumental thing for our team. It's been a great year so far. Hope we have more great years in the future. Great. Have you had any competitions so far? We've done two scrimmages. Okay. Yeah, where we, it's basically practice, but mm -hmm. still structured and with the whole field and different teams. They just don't. I think questions. we have questions. <laughs> we have answers. <laughs> so, what else do you have to say, though, so we don't cut you off? You can, you can take questions now. Okay. Can you talk about your scrimmage against Sparta, please? The Battle of the Bluffs and, and how you think you did? The Battle of the Bluffs, that was an interesting one. That one was especially fun because we got to rust out our tools and help, like, with the field. We helped with field maintenance. But um, that one was our real first experience driving um, on an actual field. So that was very interesting. Uh, there was a lot of learning curves for sure. There may or may not have been a few craft wood pieces, but you live and you learn. So. Well, the reason I bring it up is because my my brother is the uh, industrial tech teacher out of Sparta, mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, I told him that uh, I feel like we won that competition. Uh, <laughs> he did say that they took it easy on you, which I don't know. If, uh, <laughs> and I was able to gloat a little bit to my yeah. little brother, which I don't get to see very often, and that's because of the robotics team. So yeah. I, I thank you very much. Well, if it helps any more with your gloating, I'll um, <laughs> anything you got, I'll take. We did score more points on the amp than any other team did. We did track some of that. Yeah, um, very good. By thank far. you. By far. <laughs> um yeah, that scrimmage was amazing. And as I said before about the cardboard, duct tape, um, zip ties and prayers, that robot was half cardboard. <laughs> and it was amazing. And it, and it was and it performed really well. And now we've um, freshened it up, let's say. Uh, it works even better. And I'm really proud of it. And continue being proud of it because it's Really when, when you're competing, do you, um, is it, is it three different bots on the same team? So you have a red team and a blue team. Yes, right? exactly. I've been to these competitions, so yeah. they're a ton of fun, honestly. Trying to uh, showcase to the best of all watch. Yeah. yeah. And it's so yeah. cool to watch, um, each competition and the three groups working, um, you know, trying to offset what other people can't do, um, that you can do, and you can do both. So mm -hmm. yeah. that can be one of the more challenging parts, especially since we don't know the teams we're working with beforehand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so at the competition, is it time slotted? Like, is there a time you'll compete? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. You know that time? Uh, we don't know yet, but we are sent to the competition, mm -hmm. um, and then we're there all day, and then they'll they have us on call, and then we load our thing in. We play, and then they send us back to our pits for a little bit, and then we come back. You know, it's just a nice little back and forth thing. We just work on whatever in the pit, and then we yeah. go do several matches in a day. We play. So we'll actually go Thursday, the uh, 4th, 
where the robot will be inspected to make sure it passes the rules for the game. And uh, then they'll have practice matches in the afternoon uh, with the actual field and the actual, I mean, at the scrimmage, like they said, it's it's wooden game pieces around. And so it's, you know, it's like, how well did they build it to the specs? Uh, and, um, you know, our bumpers got really torn up with wood instead of the clear plastic smooth that will be on the actual field. Yeah. Uh, and so we're currently rebuilding bumpers. But um, so that Thursday is, you know, people, it's free at any time, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, but there's no scheduled, you know, actual competition. It's just practice matches mm -hmm. on Thursday. And then the actual competition start on Friday, and it's kind of a round robin setup uh, mm -hmm. on Friday. And we won't find out what matches we get until uh, the matches are done on Thursday. They can clear out their computer system and, re and set up the schedule for Friday okay. and, and into Saturday morning. And then the top eight teams of the competition, there's 54 teams in the competition. Uh, the top eight will pick who they want to be um, their alliance to go into a tournament Saturday afternoon. And so there's no guarantee we'll play Saturday afternoon, but we're certainly hoping. Yeah, I mean, having not been to one of these, I'm trying to picture. Do, when you talk about being on the field, um, are you actually out in the open fields, uh, outdoors, or is this always on like the equivalent of a gym floor uh, well, on the cross center being? It all originates in a gym center, but um, everything is the floor. They put down carpet, and then they have like plexiglass, plexiglass, and like metal on the walls to keep everybody in, keep everyone safe. Um, little doors that they can open and shut, and then there's usually a big wall that separates the driving team and the actual robots, so that they don't get hit by anything. Okay, but I mean, I'm thinking about this. Just just handle um, irregular surfaces. Or is it all pretty much a smooth surface? Is where I'm kind of playing. most most match it most years. It's just it's always it's always a carpet surface, mm -hmm. and we're at a slight disadvantage because we don't have a carpet surface to practice on. So when we practice out in the concourse, then it handles differently on the carpet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so uh, you know, I mean, that's what I said. We go and we find out what it's really going to be like. Yeah. Uh, some years they may have terrain things that the robot has to go over. Okay. Uh, other years, not. It depends on what the competition is, on what do you really do. Yeah. So it's varied every year. Yeah. My other question is, kind of goes to what programming languages you use, and it partly go wants to go to the the next step, which is, are you using AI yet? We are not currently, but some teams do use AI. Um, okay. I well, the team programs in Java. That's what I'm. That's what I, I'm a programmer. Um, usually, I program in Java. I learned C plus plus before I learned Java, so I'm no more. I'm more familiar with that. But I've been learning Java more and more as I go on, and it's really fun. Just shows what what I need to learn someday. Well, we we thought we had a, a new mentor that was going to start with us this year. I mean, our newest mentor was actually a former team member from when I started. Well, whatever years ago, like uh, 14 years ago. Uh, and so he is now working at WWB Financial and he's coming to be our PR mentor. Uh, and uh, he had a friend that knows programming and I thought we we're going to get him, but he changed jobs. And so now he's commuting down to lacrosse instead of a five minute uh, walk to work. And he doesn't have the time to uh, take off for us right now. Yeah. So we could get somebody that could really elevate our programming level. So uh, we've got a camera on the robot uh, at the competition. They have basically, you know, QR codes uh, on the field so that you can know exactly where you are in the field based on how big the picture is and what angle it is and everything else. And if we could get a programmer to help us do that kind of programming, then if you go to the competition and see these teams that are at that level, my goodness, they are just like, you know, not hot knife and butter. It's just boom, smooth. The, the first 15 seconds of the match are actually completely autonomous. You can't touch the controls at all. It moves on its own. So that it does what you programmed it to do, which is what I'm working on right now with one of the mentors back there. In your competition, do you, do you have to do, use pre-programming or do you operate it as your computer? The first 15 seconds of every match is always autonomous. Yeah. Pre-programmed. Yeah, the first 15 seconds is, is autonomous, and then you have two minutes and 15 seconds to move the robot on your own. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. I think I'm, I'm thinking of all the things we read about in the daily news, up to and including autonomous cars. And you're thinking, keep going on this. <laughs> it's kind of like that because like there are some there are some new technologies that are coming into the robotics field where you can like sense where other robots are or make paths on the fly, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad you're doing it. And you said the last skill you got was to be able to hook up so that they, you know, at the very end, you everybody, each team is supposed to hook on that, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. wire. Yeah, there's a giant chain, yeah. Yeah. and you try and hook onto the chain and elevate yourself mm -hmm. up off of the ground. And that is what those gold hooks up there are for. Yeah, hang on, let me run it up real quick. <laughs> those golden hooks by the top there mm -hmm. are for hooking it on the chain. We basically drive it up, like so. We go up to there, there like the, imagine the chains right there. Drive up to it. Yeah, drive up to it, locks into there, and then locks it. And it pulls us up and we, and we sit on the chain. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs> I could come play. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have you. I don't know if they'll let you on the I floor. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I know. My last question is you must have some outfit or something you wear because I've seen these teams and everyone has. You got your shirts. There's something else that you do, hat wise, glass wise, anything else? Uh, well, we actually, like we said before, we just changed our name mm -hmm. to Chaotic Robotics. And with that, we changed our logo. Um, we don't currently have met anything with our new logo on it, but we hope to get that soon. Yes. Um, we one of our sponsors. It's Axel Images, right? Huh? One of our sponsors, Axel Images, one of Well, they made the shirts. Yeah. yeah, they made our shirts, and uh, they also are making other stuff. Oh, Windcraft is printing. Oh, yeah, Windcraft is doing Windcraft is printing. Yeah, new banners, new flag, buttons to hand out, little base decals to hand out to little kids at the uh, sure. competition. Um, fridge magnets. Um little key lanyards, uh, microfiber collars to shoot. Uh, you know, if we don't give them out at the competition, we can shoot them in the parade, uh, whatever. Yeah, and then next element just is doing fan gear, right? We'll talk about that one. Yeah, we'll talk, okay. And then how many students, how many people are on the team? Currently six, seven. Six, seven. Uh, and you have mentors to match? We have a lot of mentors and a lot of students. Six mentors. Six yeah, mentors. that's awesome. So a lot of teams have... Mm -hmm. 40 or 50, mm -hmm. and some only have 10 or 15. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, we're a couple of years ago, we had 15. So it's like, you know, yeah, hey, we're definitely one of the better teams in the area. Yeah, but you sound pretty mighty to me. So mm -hmm. thank yeah, you. Well, black four numbers, we definitely make up four in volume. Yeah. As, does that sound? That's awesome. I know you lost a mentor a couple of years ago to law school. So can't let that, that too often. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And another one passed away. And, oh. you know, Okay. Will you post the um, schedule on the websites when you get it? Uh, when I you know can it? send it to uh, John Casper. That'd be um, great. Yeah, you know, when we get it, it'll okay. be late Thursday. It'll be okay. after dinner on Thursday. Yep. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, so I'm pretty much. sure you'll see okay. some of us there. Very I nice. hope we do. Yeah, you will. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all. Thank Very you. good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is the geothermal project update. Superintendent Krasinski. Yeah, I just wanted to bring this back to the board's attention. Of course, the, the work has really been ongoing throughout the, the school year as we've had opportunities to do so. Uh, winter break provided a, a nice opportunity and, and as, as well as uh, spring break. But frankly, the some of the work has continued even, even during the, the school year, uh, weekends and, and, and off hours. So just give a brief kind of verbal update here on, on some of the work that's been done in recent weeks. So at both WK and Jefferson, they've continued to install duct and pipe work uh, within the tunnels, uh, removing some of the out of use equipment out of the mechanical rooms. Uh, got a good start on installing new mechanical, electrical and plumbing uh, at Jefferson. 
uh, Ford mechanical pads at uh, WK in preparation for the new equipment. I uh, have started installing new thermostats in classrooms. Uh, and then over spring break, the gym at WK was painted, new fans and lights were installed in both gyms. Um, as I've communicated to the board earlier this week, we've had some issues with a strong odor at WK. It really ramped up towards the end of last week, last Friday is when we started to address this issue. Uh, it has been attributed to the painting that was done in the gym. Uh, I wanna just call out the, the work that both Principal Hansen and uh, Facilities Director Mike McArdle is, is here with us tonight as well. They have really, taken on this this issue it's been quite frankly a, a real challenge for us this week um, but have worked closely with Krauss Anderson uh, to make sure that we're addressing the issue that's 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 at hand we've had uh, air scrubbers in place now for the last uh, six days in that building uh, the last two nights we've run uh, ozone generators in that space and that has made a significant difference the last two nights uh, I was just at WK uh, right at the end of the school day today. I've, I've been there a number of times throughout the last week and I can tell you that this is certainly the uh, the best uh, shape that it's been in. So we're very, very optimistic that uh, we're about to put this uh, challenging issue behind us here and be able to, to resume use of that gym space. We have closed the gym off for the last week. Uh, credit to the WK staff. They've been incredibly uh, flexible with this and especially want to call out our, our physical education teacher at uh, WK, Lucas Anderson. He's been uh, very, very gracious and flexible with uh, uh, tough circumstances here this week. So again, work work continues um, as is well documented at this point. We will be uh, ending the, the student school year uh, four days early at the end of uh, at the end of May, start of June. Uh, and that's really when we'll we'll that that work will really ramp up considerably in both buildings uh, and start that summer summer construction timeline. So we'll certainly continue to keep the board updated as we move through the next couple of months uh, and into the full fledged construction season again this summer. Happy to take any questions if there are any. The only question I have, and maybe. Um... I know that um, Director McCardle has been at the building. Are, are students and staff experiencing any um, health impacts or, or we've addressed anything that has come up or, or been um, noted by you know parents or um, students or staff members? I can speak to that. I haven't heard any feedback from uh, parents or students. I think last Friday is when we really did start to hear about those concerns from some staff members, and that's that's really what prompted uh, prompted some intervention and some some action. On that oddly, the the smell seemed to grow as the week went on last week, and that's really it seemed to kind of come to a head on Friday. Um, and again, that's that's when it became apparent that there was there was some issue there in the gym that needed to be needed to be addressed. Okay. Any other questions for board members? Yeah, um, I have to ask that has have you been hearing anything about excessive dust in the building? I think it came up again immediately after spring break because it was a it was a heavy work uh, a heavy work week. Um, you know, contractors and our own facility staff, I think, have done a nice job of addressing those concerns. It really was you'll, you'll recall back in September, it was a it was a significant concern when we first came back to the to the buildings. Um, at the start of the school year. There was a bit of a process there where we had to get through and, and despite best efforts last year of the contractors, there, there was just a lot of dust generated. Didn't really seem to be an issue throughout the fall, throughout the winter. Again, I think just, just with the new work that was done over spring break week, maybe a, a fresh round of dust was put into the air, but um, again, a credit to our facilities department for uh, continuing to address those concerns as they come up. Okay. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Superintendent. Next on our agenda is the consent agenda. This includes uh, minutes, fiscal affairs, and human resources. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. 
Thank you. Any further discussion about this? Um, and Superintendent Brzezinski, yep. can you share with us retirements at this point? Be happy to. Yeah, we've got four retirements uh, mm -hmm. noted in the agenda this evening, and I want to share just a few words um, from myself and and from our our building principals contributed to these uh, to these comments as well. And as I look at the four names uh, in the on the on the retirement list tonight, I was fortunate enough to work with uh, each one of these individuals, uh, either as a teaching colleague or or as I served as a, a building principal. Uh, so the first one that, that I'll uh, note is Holly Leckler. Uh, Holly has been a huge asset to the middle school special education department. Uh, she has served the students and families of Winona Public Schools for 27 years. Uh, she has a wonderful personality and has been a dedicated employee. Her smile, wit, and connections she has made with students and staff will be missed. Thank you and congratulations to Holly Leckler. Uh, also at the middle school, Lisa Mullen. Lisa has served the students and staff of Winona Public Schools for 35 years. Uh, first as a teacher and more recently as a counselor for a number of years. Uh, Lisa Mullen is a backbone of the middle school counseling department, always willing to take the extra step to meet the uh, needs of middle school students. Uh, her presence on the social committee is a huge asset to the building and her steady, consistent presence will be difficult to replace. Congratulations and thank you to Lisa Mullen. And then two at the high school level, uh, Patty Darbo. Uh, Patty has served the students and families of Winona Public Schools for the last 20 years. Uh, Patty moves through her day with great energy and positivity. She's helped connect our students to the larger Winona community through work experience opportunities. Uh, Patty has been an amazing ambassador for Winona Area Public Schools and will leave very big shoes to fill. Thanks and congratulations to Patty Darbo. And last but not least, Karen Whitney Thrun. Karen has served the students and families of Winona Public Schools for 43 years. She spent the first decade of her career as a teacher at Winona Junior High School. The, uh, the West Building on Broadway, uh, and then uh, transitioned into a council role uh, at the high school. She's been an absolute staple of the high school staff ever since. Uh, Karen approaches each person and each situation with compassion and can bring a feeling of calm to any situation. Karen has provided tremendous uh, support to both students and colleagues. I consider myself fortunate to have had the opportunity to work alongside Karen for a number of years. Congratulations and Thank you to Karen Whitney Turner. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, next on our agenda is um, a unique uh, position. And I told the superintendent that we, you know, we tr treat, you know, ones that are unique to us or um, to stand out as a as something that the board would want to hear rationale for. This is one of them, so I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent. Yes, yeah. thank you. So, the uh, the action requested here tonight from the board is approval of uh, an offer of employment for our physical therapist position. Um, just for a bit of context, we have, of course, uh, always have uh, physical therapy needs, uh, student needs uh, called for in, in individualized education program. Um, historically, it's been a very challenging position for us to fill. Uh, as, as it is for, for all school districts. Uh, we currently contract out for physical therapy services. Um, we have an opportunity in, in offering this contract to hire our own physical therapist. Uh, we really see this as an opportunity, first and foremost, for a real upgrade in terms of the, the, the quality of, of service and support that's gonna be provided to our students, simply because this is gonna be provided in person, unfortunately, the, the the current structure we have, those services are provided uh, virtually. Uh, furthermore, this is a, a real cost benefit to the to the school district as well. Um, those contracted services do not come cheaply, uh, and so this is a really a, a win win opportunity for us to improve the student experience uh, and to improve the uh, the financial outlook for the school district. Uh, and again, the the. Recommendation is to uh, offer this position at uh, master's plus 30, uh, step five, and that takes into account the last two years of experience working directly in a school district and two additional years of experience uh, working in, in related fields, but outside of the school setting. Happy to take any questions. Andres Watkins. I just want to say thank you for the work that went into this recruitment and, and 
working towards this. I know wearing the superintendent hat and the HR hat as you've been here lately, um, that's a lot. And But to be able for us to be able to find folks in these roles, as you mentioned, the specialized roles is uh, critical for all of our students and families. And uh, it's just great to see that and a great addition. So thank you for your work. I appreciate that praise. I'm going to deflect that to uh, Wendy Harward as our uh, director of special education. She's the one that really did the hard work around the uh, the recruitment and the, the, the communication with the candidates. So. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll move. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving um, this position say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you for your work on this. Um, next on our agenda is the policies. These are um, the first ones are reviews only. And it looks like we just have a few here. So, Superintendent Brzezinski, 512. Yeah. So, policy 512 school sponsored student publications and activities. Again, there are no changes there. Board operation uh, committee had an opportunity to to review each of these policies. Uh, again, bringing this forward, no, 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 no recommended changes. Simply, uh, it's a, it's a, it's its turn in the three year review cycle. Happy to address any questions, but no, no uh, recommended changes on policy five twelve. Similarly, uh, policy 850, energy policy, again, board operations had an opportunity to review no recommended changes here. So these are both presented as information items only this evening, but happy to take questions if there are any. We won't see those again because they're reviewed. Yeah. Okay. All right, next on our agenda, our first um, readings. Again, we've got um, you, Superintendent yep. Brzezinski, with 407 and yeah. employee right to know. I'll take the first, and then uh, Director McCardle is going to join us for the next two. So uh, policy 407, uh, employee right to know, exposure to hazardous substances. There are very minimal changes there. There was a statute reference uh, update, and then uh, some inclusive language updates, just changing uh, her, his, to, to they. Uh, that's, that's the extent of the recommended changes on Policy 407. And then Director McCardle, can you join us up here? Thank you. We have policy 805, waste reduction and recycling. Um, uh, recommended changes. Uh, you see some strike throughs on there on the Minnesota statutes. Um, other than that, I don't think there was any specific changes to it. And then uh, policy 807, health and safety policy. Likewise, we have a few of Minnesota statute that was crossed off, but other than that, I think it is what it is. Any questions on either of those? Any board members have questions, Director Sonneman? Yeah, I actually kind of want to go back and ask you a question about the energy policy. Um, you know, it's staying where it is, but I see two things that are going on that I don't know, and might be more appropriate to the uh, the committee than to to you, uh, Director McArdle. But but two things going on that uh, I'm kind of looking to see when we start incorporating it in here. One is. Um, charging facilities for electric vehicles. Uh, I know there's off and on we have a conversation about that. Uh, but, and the other is, um, I know that uh, Excel is going around changing meters and I get the impression they're going more toward, uh, you know, there's, a, there's an increased conservation element in Excel's planning. And I don't know how we bring that into our operations is what I'm trying to understand. I'm not certain on the XL piece. They have not communicated anything with us here as a commercial account yet. Yeah. Uh, right. The only thing I know of at this point, they're actually looking to change a gas line, not a meter here on this property. Um, but in regards to your first question, we have had that, you and I have had that conversation. We explored it. That's the charging the electric vehicles. We explored it when the lot was torn up because that would have been the time to do it. It was just not cost prohibitive for us. And I do see there's some more more things available, rebates and such available. But now it would mean 
trying to trench to a specific parking stall to get those in place. So personally, not a big fan of tearing up our existing parking lot. So it would, I don't see the payback to be quite honest with you. I don't know if we're drawing enough people to justify that expense. No, I get all what you're saying. It's just, I think it's, it's again, kind of the future is going to be more and more plug-in vehicles and, uh, Actually, I'm always curious whether why would we would necessarily have to incur the expense? Why is somebody putting a, a unit in with a billing system on it? There's bits and pieces of it that are covered, but there are the charging piece itself. It would be our responsibility. And I've only had one ask in five years. Other than me? No. <laughs> I know what I asked all the questions, but I don't like the answer. So thank you. Okay. If there are questions about the first meeting of the policies, uh, make sure that in the next few weeks you get those questions to Superintendent Brzezinski so that he can provide an answer before we see them again, um, when we take action on them um, in the second meeting in April. Um, next on our agenda are policies that are up for action. Um, there are several of them. Are there any of these policies that a board member would like to remove for separate consideration? Director Watkins. Uh, Matt, Matt would like to remove this for discussion uh, question specifically. Um, in terms of policy 104, uh, our mission statement says policy the policy translated no. Does the policy need to be translated yes? We acknowledge the need. What is the timeline on that? Just I'll play my rookie card here. Um, to, when would that be translated? Because if there's one document in our district, it should be accessible to everybody, it would be our mission statement. Before we answer that question, because um, you don't want to remove them, you just have a right, clarifying question. Okay. So let's have a motion to approve. This would be policy 104, school district mission, 201, legal status of the school board, 410, family and medical leave policy, policy 416, drug, alcohol, and cannabis testing policy and forms, 528, student, parental, family, and marital status non-discrimination, 801, equal access to facilities and form, and then 712, video surveillance other than on buses. Is there a motion to approve this entire slate? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second, and then Director Watkins, 104. Just uh, wanting to know what is the timeline. I mean, we acknowledge the need to translate this policy, uh, which I think we all would be in agreement of. Do we, is there a boilerplate timeline for this, or is this kind of a ad hoc situation? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, so our, uh, I, I think I could answer your question a little bit. The policy, uh, I can't speak on the translate, translate, translation uh, completely, but what I can I speak to is that the uh, strategic plan uh, is on the website. The website on the bottom right-hand corner has a translate bo button. It can translate to many different languages. Uh, school people have that option if they, they need that translation. Very the policy, and you know that the previous HR director said that translation process is not always easy to do, uh, but that's all the further I can answer that probably would be Superintendent Brzezinski to speak for well, in the future. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know the answer to that question today, but I'd be happy to look into it. And, and I guess, well, I very much appreciate digital research. There are hard copy out there and thinking of the populations that would be looking at this and needing the translation. One more reason to make sure that we get it to the late Director Wack, or Director Sonneman. Yeah, the, the concern I have about um, 712 uh, video surveillance, I mean, I think as far as we're changing it, all to the good. But it continues to concern me that the world of video has changed so radically since this policy was originally written. Um, and I, if nothing else, I'm disappointed that MSBA has figured out a 
you know, a newer, stronger, better approach. Because my, my real concern keeps coming back to this. Yeah. This was written at a time when this, when a school district had the facilities and would do video survey, video. Today, everybody in the building has the capacity to do it. And I really think we need to be writing a policy that addresses that rather than hoping by our silence, we're not encouraging something because it's happening. And I, I would I, I think we we need a we need it in we need a policy in writing dealing with the larger picture to strengthen our hands when something happens and it will happen someday. Maybe not here. I hope not here, believe me. But it's happening sporadically in districts across the country. And uh it's the capacity for things to happen that concerns me. Before I ask Director Smith, because you're going to have an answer for Director Simon, right? Uh, actually, Director Watkins. <laughs> oh, well, that, I was going to go back to Director Watkins to make sure that we have clarity on you're going to find out some of the answers for what he had asked. Well, if you um, search strategic plan on the Winona Area Public Schools mm -hmm. website, you can click on strategic plan and it'll say view here. You click on that and then you switch it over to Spanish. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, if you're Spanish, you could do it prior to that, but I wanted to be able to find it. <laughs> so I was able to switch it over and it does translate the entire strategic plan on the page for you. Um, so it is accessible on the website as well. And you still have a, another question besides that. My question would be any resources out there, pamphlets, brochures. I mean, we're talking specifically about the school district mission statement. Mm -hmm. And again, I mean, there may be one that I'm not thinking of, but I can't think of any one thing that should be the most accessible, the most broadly reaching mm -hmm. than our mission statement. Um, okay. and, and not having it translated would, would be a uh, travesty. So, so I, yeah, the digital resource, I really appreciate it. And that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking for all the other uh, okay. platforms that particularly a family new to our, maybe new to our country, new to our community, new to our school district, we'd want that mission statement to be mm -hmm. as shoveled in as possible. And what I would ask um, the superintendent to do is just follow up yep. on that and uh, we'll vote on this sure. and there'll still be a follow up. Yep. Anything yep. else, Director Smith? Yeah. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve all of those policies as presented with one question that yep. Superintendent Brzezinski will ask. Um, all those in favor of approving these, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. All of those um, policies pass. Um, next on our agenda is grade level reconfiguration. There are several um, documents that are associated with this. These are ones that have been um, out there um, all along. And there's one additional one that Director Watkins had asked for some districts, not necessarily big nine districts that had um, had different configurations. So there was an original document put together and then the superintendent added um, the big nine. So we've got um, several mm -hmm. different ones, but that's the only new document in um, all of these. So. Director Hanratty. Yeah, I, uh, we had a motion to approve the grade level reconfiguration proposal. Second. Thank you. And for sake of discussion here, because you know we have had a, a lot of a uh, lot of feedback, we've had a lot of information. Um, what my um, proposal would be for each board member to um, be able to say something or at least give some input into you know their thoughts and what they've heard about the proposal or just some idea of what um, they would like to share, you certainly can pass if you like. But um, for now, I would ask each board member um, to give at least some um, indication of where they're at and what um, they'd like to say. Anyone wanna start with this? I know. Um, I, I'll start off by saying I, I do like the idea of thinking outside the box. Um, however, the way that, um, 
the way that this plan was set up with two grade levels at each school. Um, I've heard loud and clear from staff and community that they want change, but not this change. Um, there's so many complications that were included in it um, as far as, you know, different suggestions for other options. There were um, the transportation piece, mm -hmm. um, not only busing, but just parents having difficulty traveling from school to school, um, depending on, you know, their transportation concerns. Um, within each individual family, having children at three different schools at the same time or five different schools at the same time, um, the thoughts that are uh, the actuality that our schools are not fully equipped to handle um, all of our children um, equitably. And, you know, the the challenges that these children would face moving from school to school. Um, definitely the the concerns with the parents being involved in each school and their activities, um, including things like PTA, but not excluding things like family breakfast mm -hmm. and bingo and, you know, just moving back to relationships, like it's so important. The the things that, you know, the staff knows about each student in that school. And I understand that they can learn those things at grade levels, um, but then you're losing that, that role model aspect or you're losing that, you know, my siblings going to the school with me. So, you know, one of the parents, something that really stood out to me was one of the parents, I said, well, what do you think of this? And her response was, well, it sounds like my first grader is going to be walking eight blocks to school by herself. And my third grader is going to be catching a bus right in front of my house. And that had a huge impact on me when thinking about this, because this person doesn't have a car to drop their kids off and their kids walk to school together. But she relies on that older sibling to guide the younger sibling to school. And if that older sibling's catching a bus, then no one's walking that first grader to school. And that was a huge um, kind of punch in the gut for me. Like, this is not something that, you know, is, is equitable for everyone. So I just wanted to share that as some of the feedback that I've heard. And... Thank you. Um, your collections. First, I say thank you to Director Smith for going first. This is a <laughs> cool to jump into. So, kudos to you. Um, as a board and as a district, we discussed and we voted on and we approved uh, spending money on a third party mediator, uh, as I guess what I would call engagement on it. We contracted with them, we trusted them with the process. Um, we asked a group of citizens, which included teachers, taxpayers, folks in the community that do not have kids here currently, et cetera. We asked them to come together, put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, and we chose to do something different or propose something different than what that group did. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. I think we, when we ask people their opinions in that form and when we spend taxpayer dollars on that type of process, we need, as it has been said already today, we need to honor that process and we need to see a return on our investment. And so I think... Um, I deeply, and I want to make sure this message is heard too, I deeply appreciate the fact that board members brought something forward because not doing something is not an option either. So I think it's important that, that, that we don't lose, that we don't develop an inertia and stop doing anything. Um, but we had a, a focus group. We had a task group. They brought forward an idea. I think that's where we should start, uh, hearing that in different threads and themes from people in our community. Uh, despite one of our um, comments made earlier tonight, I do spend a lot of time in my district talking to people and having them talk to me. It's some of the most valuable time I spend, I think. And that is a common theme. You know, why, why would I vote or why would I invest time in a committee if I'm not going to be listened to? If we're spending money on that, where does that money not get spent somewhere else? So I strong, I will be voting against this plan. Um, and I do hope that we find um, within us as a board 
the willingness to listen to the people that we pass with uh, because they aren't easy and there is no one solution that we work with. Um, I do, if I'll steal a phrase I've already said tonight, you know, we need to honor the work that that committee put in um, and find a way to, to move forward as a district. So, um, so thank you for the opportunity to speak to that. Thanks. Director Schull. Um, I'm not going to be trying to convince anybody of my perspective. I'm only going to share my rationale for how I plan to vote. Uh, we do not have a perfect hand provided us regardless of what we do. Um, so um, our current structure in our elementary buildings exacerbates the concentration of poverty in our community. Uh, this proposal before us addresses this by not concentrating the poverty. Our buildings, our buildings are um, vastly different. Uh, and this proposal would be our most strident effort thus far to address the issue of concentrated poverty, equity, and systemic racism more than anything we have done thus far, more than the hiring or firing of any potential position, more than any written plan centered on equity and inclusion. The improvement made by this plan on this issue is more than significant. Number two, this proposal before us evens out our class sizes, what we are currently doing is not sustainable nor responsible. My third thought is that this proposal provides an opportunity for this district to use our fleet of buildings creatively to see what this district could potentially envision for a referendum that wisely addresses our deferred maintenance and facility needs. There are some imperfections um, to this proposal, as is with any, but it is the best one I have seen. Um, but there are a lot of benefits to doing this, and it's laid out in this proposal. I'm in support of the plan, but desire a pause of its implementation to allow our staff to be involved in planning and to be prudent when doing so. Thank you. Director Hanratty. Thank you. Uh, similarly to Director Schul, uh, we do have unequal school boundaries. Uh, getting rid of boundaries or changing uh, boundaries and having an open rural school district will continue to have unequal school buildings, racially unequal, social, economically unequal school buildings. We talk about systemic racism in our district. I think everybody uh, at this board in the past has thought about, well, dark. Darsh Garnet, we need to change our systemic racism. We just don't know how. This is a way to do it. Uh, similarly, I also hear from our teachers that they, uh, you know, pushing it right now uh, could be uh, pretty stressful. So can, can we wait? I am open to waiting. Rich Simon. Yeah. You gotta say something somewhere. You don't have to. You don't have to. You 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 um, no, I, it's hard to, to think of what to say. I think a lot of, of what I would say has been said. Uh, it was said last Thursday. Um, uh, I kind of agree with the, what uh, was textually said tonight, which is that everybody who showed, came last week told us the truth. Um, and that doesn't mean that they all said the same thing or they all have the same opinions on it. But they spoke from their heart and they meant what they said. And I think they identified the flaws in this approach uh, overwhelmingly. Um, I would like to believe that it's enough to convince us not to ever do this type of approach. I'm going to say, I think grade level schools in this district uh, uh, would do more harm than any other possible problem, so, uh, plan, approach I've heard in the past or that we've actually carried out. Um, 
we would lose students. We always resist trying to estimate what we'd lose, but I think realistically, we have to start at 10% and work upward. Um, one, one proposal I was reading as I was reading through things mentioned that uh, a survey in, in a district elsewhere showed upwards of 30% would leave. And I think in this district, there's far more fluidity, frankly, between the different possibilities. We are in competition and we need to get out there and compete. This is not going in the direction of competing. This is in, in, the, direct, in the direction of saying, essentially inviting people to leave. And I, I re would regret ever going that way. I don't think we'd ever pass a referendum, at least in my, I can almost say my lifetime, but that's partly because it isn't that long left. Sorry, I'm sorry about <laughs> that, but a lot of you have a lot more uh, of time to work on it. And obviously someday, somewhere along the way, uh, this community will change. Uh, but how it will change, I'm not about to predict. I'm still working off of what I understand, what I've seen for the last uh, many years, I'll say. I went to high, I went to grade school here. I went to what we call junior high school. I went to high school here. Um, and not in this building, which puts it in a context that even, even the chair can't match me on. Um, but, uh, you know, it, we have got a record of how we approach things in this community. I think one of the biggest problems is that uh, kind of what we saw in the last, uh, made, well, we got to go back three referendums, but the, the one that was defeated resoundingly in a major, in a major referendum. And there was no single reason that referendum failed. People have different opinions and different ways to go. It is one of our tasks, one of the hardest things we have to do to look for ways that we can move forward, that we can bring about the change people want, recognizing that there's very little consensus as to what change should be undertaken. The problem is recognizing change that is just overwhelmingly not acceptable to this community. And I think this is one that is not acceptable. Yes, you'll find, you know, I read a few comments that support it, but I read overwhelmingly comment after comment that opposes it. And I know there's been some discussion of, well, it's coming from one particular grade school. Well, I was fascinated to see how much, uh, not just parents uh, from uh, the other two grade schools would appear, but sta uh, faculty, staff, uh, who I've heard would benefit, in fact, in this. And they are standing here telling us not to do this and telling us many of the drawbacks of grade level schools. I think overwhelmingly our concern has to be in this regard, that it's it, we, have, we have learned from what we're hearing. And it's a good discussion to, to have. It's a good discussion to start because we need to continue this. Uh, that the two things that I heard over, overall, over, over and over again, were that it's relationships and it's trust that are developed in our elementary schools. And if there are two things that I think are important to this district overall, I, it's that it's relationships and it's trust. We try and form relationships here on this board. We try and form relationships with our our. Our uh, staff, we try and form relationships with our community. And we are, it's an ongoing day to day process. Um, when we get, when we make progress in those relationships, we start to build trust. I'd hope to believe that we've moved the trust needle substantially in the positive direction over the last five or six years. Um, and I, I see, you know, I want to welcome um, Superintendent Brzezinski back to the district, back to the district he grew up in, frankly, um, because I think just being part of us has made us, has, has helped move us along those ways. And why is that? Well, why does he build trust? Because he's got relationships in this community. And we can't throw that out because we think there's a better way to do something. We think there's a goal. We need to, to start addressing those problems. Whatever We know the problems are there. We need to go at those problems, but not to do so in a way that 
throws the baby out with the bathwater, uh, throws trust and relationship relationships and then trust out, which we we whatever we would gain, we would so be so far fall behind. I think the easiest point of looking at that, and I looked at uh, uh, Mr. Hillary's analysis on numbers. He's always pretty good with with carrying the numbers down and rebuilding them to tell us what's going on. Um, and, um, you know, something I hadn't quite picked up on, but our ongoing costs of doing this would, would increase our costs, not reduce them. Whatever savings we have for um, one or two classrooms that aren't there anymore, uh, we'll make up, we'll, we'll be spending money uh, to uh, operate, particularly special education, uh, in a different way, uh, broken down in different schools, if we're going to keep it legal, if we're going to keep it valuable, if we're going to keep it where we know we build, the, again, the relationships and the trust, we would have to put a tremendous amount of effort into doing it in a grade level school system. Whereas a K-4, K-5, I still think we should have it five. You see my comments on any number of things. I, I think we made a mistake putting five in the middle school, but what is, is, and I'm not going back to, again, one of the problems is understanding what is, is in this community um, and taking it and accepting it and then building on it, but building positively, incrementally, um, slowly even over time. Um, yes, one of the overwhelming things is we've been asked to have a strategic plan. I think if we spent a year discussing it, rather than trying to create a master plan written, you know, according to the rules of strategic plans. But we spent time talking about the problems we know are there and what we think we want to do. We might make some progress. This, this is the smartest school board, I think, exists in the state of Minnesota. I look at just your backgrounds and where you come from, and what you bring to this. And I think it, I think we could make a lot of progress, but we need to do it by looking at what are our problems, and what, how can we solve them? And we're not going to agree, believe me. I'm sitting here long enough to know that agreement isn't what we're good at. Consensus isn't really the solution. But being open and candid and talking willingly about what we want, we might get to a point that we can plan, you know, plan for the future. And that's what we hear the community overwhelmingly saying. We want to know what your plan for the future is. And in some ways, they're not saying what their plan for the future is. They've all got different ideas. They're saying to the board, what is your plan for the future? Uh, and that, you know, the, the what is the famous line? The buck stops here. That we're the buck, we're where the buck stops. And we don't have Harry Truman's desk to put it on, but we got seven of us to figure it out. But that's kind of where we're headed with this. And I, and I, uh, I agree. Slow it down. Move this forward. You know, move this off the table for right now. But um, I really think I would like to see us uh, reject the idea of grade level schools rather than just you know uh, move it back a year uh, because I don't think it's the right idea. But I hope that we'll be able to get at those ideas, you know, and in, in, in putting out a kind of draft alternative plan. I have no, I, I, I take no ownership. Uh, well, that's the wrong, wrong answer, but I take no desire to see it, any particulars. I heard from when our staff was here, at least several of them said there could be 30 possible options. And I tend to agree. That's the amount of ideas we have. We have to reduce that into a more manageable group and number, I agree. Um, but uh, we're at a point, we're at the beginning of the process, not at the end. And we need to uh, recognize that and go work toward that end where whatever plan we get out there, whatever end result we go, change for the sake of change isn't what I, I wanna see. I wanna know why we're you know pursuing change. And I get the reasons that Director Hanrad and Director Shul are giving for change. I agree with the, the principle, but I think you're pursuing the wrong approach because you would destroy 
so much uh, to get small, you know, in some ways a small gain. And whether you'd actually get that gain because of what's destroyed um, is what I truly fear. I think we have to find ways to, keep, to, to pursue those ends uh, in a different way. Um, so I, I, I'm obviously opposed to this particular plan. Um, I'm perfectly willing to work for, if we needed an immediate plan, I'm, you know, whatever, you know, there are ways of getting, putting, thinking something down, but, uh, you know, and I'm willing to have those, I've done that once so you can see what my thinking is. But um, I won't put that forward tonight because it won't be productive. Thank you. Keep you happy. There are a couple of people I, I know. No, but that's my concerns, and and I really do deeply believe that we need we need to be looking for solutions. I, I, I want to close with this because I think you know I want to say that. I hear the, the discussion of a single elementary school in this town. And I won't say that the, the idea particularly intrigues me. I've got, I see concerns about it, but I get that some, for some people, that's a way that schools can operate. Um, it would take, it would be a, an elementary school with, um, am I right, about 650 to 750, maybe 800 students. To me, that's just too big for elementary. Um, we're maybe a little smaller than is desirable, but uh, the 200 to 300 seems to work work best for exactly the reasons we've been hearing about relationships and trust. And however we we go forward, whatever we talk about, I hope that we keep those two ideas in front of us. Uh, because out of those, out of relationships and trust, we will solve the issue of poverty. Uh, the impact of poverty in this district. We can solve the issue of uh, race and race, racial discrimination in this district. It won't be easy, but we won't solve them unless we have relationships and we have trust. And um, we can answer the bigger questions that we have. And frankly, we will pass a referendum a lot sooner than I've been thinking, as long as we have those two. Thank you, Director Sonneman. Director Leonard. Um, so when this proposal first came forward, um, and I first read it, um, the collaborating part of it for teachers intrigued me. This isn't the first time I've heard of this. I've been on the board 12 years. My kids have gone to this district. This reconfiguration has been thrown around when my kids were younger. Um, it, it never came, it never came to fruition. It never came to a board that I know of. It never came to the board in the 12 years that I've been on here. Um, and, and there's a reason for that. I am sure. Um, I list, I have listened to many teachers. I have had people show up at my doorstep. I have gotten letters with no signatures to them that went directly to the trash can because if you don't take the time to sign them, I don't need to take the time to read them. Um, I have had many parents call me. I've had many emails, some nice ones, some not so nice ones. Um, I don't know that we will ever my hope is we will, but I don't know that we will ever get to the point where we can all come to an agreement for what's good for kids. Um, I've heard that kids can't handle change. I've heard that kids can't go through this or can't go through that. Um, I got on the board to do what's right for kids. I got on the board to give Rolling Stone a voice way back when. When Rolling Stone closed, I never brought it up again to the district because I believe in public schools and I believe 
in what's good for kids. Um, I had to watch my grandkids leave what was home to them. And they are all successful in the schools that they are in. And they are not part of WAPS. So I am going to say this. I believe that children will thrive when the adults around them are excited and happy and encouraging them to do what they need to do when change happens. I can't vote for the proposal as it is, but I do know that we can't keep moving the can down the road. I do know that we need to do what's good for kids. And I do know that the adults need to come together to do that. I know that this proposal was put together um, for the reasons my colleagues have said. Um, I do know that the teachers spoke to us with passion and care for the kids. I do know that the parents are concerned um, with change is hard. So I would not vote for the proposal as is, but I would like to make an amendment um, and ask that we pause, as Marianne Texley has said, and some of our co my colleagues have said, that we pause on implementing this proposal um, for grade level reconfiguration and pause it and keep the conversation going at least till fall of, till the fall of 2025. Um, so we can hopefully come to some kind of fruition. Um, but I'd also like, um, with re respect to what my, my colleagues have um, alluded to, I would also like the um, superintendent and principals to um, adhere to our target sizes, because I do think there's a different way for us to reach those goals. Um, so I'm asking that we um, direct the, the principals and the superintendent to keep working on those target sizes for each of the elementary schools. Whether, I don't know what that means. If that means um, moving students, if, if the classes are full, they have to move to another school. Um, whether that means combining things, um, whether that means moving staff, I just believe that we can reach that equity piece in a different way. Um, and that and that we um, bring our board policy um, 798, the one about the attendance boundaries, um, back to the April 4th meeting so we can edit it to um, fit what this amendment is asking. Can we have a uh, re reading of the amendment, please? Just so we can get it on the record. Sure. Um, I'm asking that um, we pause on the implementation of this proposed grade level reconfiguration until um, fall of 2025 um, and ask that the superintendent and elementary principals um, adhere to our target sizes and look, you know, at different ways to um, reach those. And I don't know what those ways are, whether they are um, combining uh, sections, whether that means uh, moving teaching staff, whether that means um, shutting off at the cap and moving it to um, moving kids to other buildings. Um, and then also um, that we bring board policy 798 back um, so we can look at it to fit into the amendment. And to be clear, 798 is our boundary policy. Yes. <laughs> I have the right. Yep, 798. All right, we have an amendment. Do we have a second to the amendment? I'll second. 
Thank you. And further discussion about um, the amendment. George Schulk. Thank you. Um, thank you, Director Larnitz. Um, just for clarification, my understanding, based on the wordage, word uh, wording of that amendment, is that the current proposal will be implemented. It's just not until the fall of 2025, according to the amendment. Yes, but I think we can look at other reconfigurations as we have continue to have the talk. I think the talk should continue. Right now, the amendment says this proposal till 25, though. Will we not look at it again, though? Well, we will have another meeting to talk about that um, after we settle this one. Director Hanley. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Director uh, Letter. I think that uh, I'd like to support this amendment, uh, specifically because of the three uh, the three tier approaches. Uh, first, uh, while this proposal is uh, current, would currently be approved, I think it does room for uh, it, it allow for time that if there was a different configuration that the superintendent was recommending, we, we would hear that and, and either uh, vote it. Uh, put it up or put it down. Uh, second, we, we need to uh, I don't. I don't like to work the use the word need in my day job because when you tell people what they need to do, typically they do the opposite. Uh, I use words like nudge, encourage, uh, other words like that. But this is a need. Uh, re refiguring our class sizes is a need. Uh, we've had some uh, pretty heated debate at this table whether it's Rio sections or high sections at one school, low sections at one school. Uh, we can continue to have the debate, uh, but but there is a need for, for lasting change there. Finally, our, our attendance uh, area boundary policy, I, I approve bringing that back as soon as possible. Uh, I think that there's there are some tweaks that we could make to, while we would not have this proposal for, uh, for this upcoming school year, we certainly should have a better plan on how to uh, readdress some of those concerns that we, the district, is having. Director Smith. I just wanted to clarify, <laughs> because otherwise I might have to take my second one. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just making sure that I understood right. So we are putting this on pause till 25. Um, but with the understanding that this current proposal is not necessarily what might be coming forward in 25, that other options are going to be considered, not just this one that's being suggested right now. That's what I would like to see. Okay, okay. Then I don't take my, my second. I I'm gonna leave Wasn't it. gonna let you do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just hurt you yeah, that is my concern that I was hearing as he says Stephanie says, but freeze up. Um, you know, that was what I understood and I could support that. But I can't support anything that implies that we would be adopting this by uh, this amendment and our plan to go forward that it's it's an open question and it would have to be debated and considered on its merits at some point in time. Just director Watkins. First I want to reiterate my point that I made I'll support what our task force brought forward. And I think we all need to remind ourselves as a district we chose to partner with a third party because we trusted them to then take a group of 40-ish people and give us a good plan and we're choosing to ignore that and everything that I hear here, which is really is concerning. The second question I have, piece I have to this is at the point we've we're talking about scheduling things a year and a half out down the road, every moment we do that, markets like security, and we are dealing in a market. That's truly what we're in here. 
And if we're going to make things more hard to understand and more cloudy and more opaque, it's not going to serve us in any way, shape, or form in a positive manner. So I, as one board member, would state we need to take action on what was presented and let that be as it may, and then address future plans, including what I believe would be listening to our task force that we asked to spend an awful lot of money, a lot of time, time and money on developing the plan. But we're, we're making things more confusing, more, more or less predictable, which is bad for any market, including the market of parents and their children. And I think that we are in the, uh, we're going down a path that is not going to help our district right now. And it's because that's purely one person's opinion. Thank you. We have a motion on the table to accept the uh, grade level configure proposal uh, proposal as is. The amendment would uh, pause implementation of that proposal until the fall of 2025. That's what we're voting on. Um, with the additional uh, reaching out to the superintendent to the, the board policy, uh, then we would implement it in 2025 unless the board has makes a different change prior to them. I, that, that's how I interpret the amendment. George Simon. Yeah, and, and I think I appreciate what Director Hanratty has just said because it's clear his understanding. Mine was the exact opposite, that we weren't offering any implementation direction. The word implementation is what I find very troubling. And frankly, could I could not support the amendment or obviously the basic motion. If that in that case, but uh, that's where I thought we were finding a way to say if we pause it, we'll take time, we'll 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 move this into a long term study, but with no foreordained determination. And I don't know if I've heard from two of you that would see it as implementation. Whether you could still accept a, an amendment that didn't approach it that way. Because I should shut up, I know, but in the alternative, I if it's implementate, headed toward implementation, I think everything that Director Watkins has just said is accurate and of a grave concern to me. So I agree with that. So, just like, I don't know, this is getting really confusing. So we're gonna take the task force idea and the idea that Nancy and Michael came up with, and we're gonna have our teachers review the options and come up with either choosing one of the, the options that were already brought forward or making alterations to those options so that it works for them because they're the people that are in in the buildings. They're the ones that are working with the students. And I mean, they probably would have an understanding of what's best in the school building more than I would. I sit in the county building for 40 hours a week. And I don't sit in the school building for 40 hours a week. So my understanding is that those options are gonna be brought forward, brought to our teachers and principals and the superintendent and them people will work together and come up with an option that they wanna bring forward to the board within a year. Mm -hmm. My reminder to the group, and I, I'm going to just segue a little bit. Um, the task force did have this on their list. It clearly was one of their options. So to say that it wasn't brought to us, ideas were brought to us, two of them. They were not recommendations because the task force didn't feel like they could do that. So. You know, in, in my mind, the task force came up with five ideas. They had multiple discussions about them, including this exact one. So they couldn't, you know, wrap their head around or decide um, based on lots of conversation and what they were going to bring. And when they brought two ideas to us, 
both of those ideas would require a substantial amount of money that the board does not have to be able to implement. So that's why this proposal came to the board as what we've often said was a bridge to addressing a bigger question and, you know, not to call out Principal Texley, I'm not going to do that, but she said, and I know, and people around here know, that this conversation, um, the board um, director here um, says 12 years, the board has never had this discussion at the board table. It's been outside of the board table. It's not happened here. And as much as people want to believe that the board hasn't listened, um, I've listened often to consistent curriculum, collaboration, equity in class sizes, and this proposal addresses um, a lot of those things. So as we're looking at an amendment, that's our first question. We have an amendment with a second that we need to vote on. It says we're taking a pause until 2025. The superintendent and the three building the principals will make our target sizes um, equitable. They will make them size, you know, size right in our buildings. And as Director Leonard said, they, you know, that may mean um, combining. It may mean you know, staff moving, it may mean not moving. We don't know what that looks like until they start to wrestle with it. And then thirdly, bring that 798 back here so that we can really talk about what do our boundaries look like? How do we address that so that we don't end up with class sizes that are too big or class sizes that are too small? That's what we're talking about right now. That's the amendment. And there's lots of feelings about it. So I, I understand that, but that's the basic principle. Director Leonard. And to, I want us to be able to continue to have the conversation because we do have to have a plan. And I like, I you know, we heard two year, five year, 10 year. I think we can be working on that plan as we move forward to 2025. This reconfiguration in my mind, does it have to be as it is in the proposal? I don't think so. I think we can look at it different ways as a reconfiguration. And I don't know what that is, you know, but I, I think we got to keep having the conversation. Director Simon. Yeah, I'm going to say I can support the motion based upon the person who made the motion as she describes it and the person who seconded it. It's all going for. I, I accept their interpretation. My interpretation of the amendment is the same as Director Hanratty's. Should I just take out the word implement implementation? You didn't say the word implementation? I didn't think I did. You said pause in the proposal until 20. So it remains a proposal. That's the key. The proposal is the proposal. Director Schultz, sorry, it sounds confusing. I don't want to walk out of this meeting wondering what we're doing. <laughs> the language, I have the floor. The language matters of an amendment and a motion. I'm interpreting the language as saying the same as Director Hanratty, what Director Hanratty said. Um, I'm hearing something very different from some of my board colleagues. That cannot, that needs to be cleared up. Can you read that motion again, the amendment? I'm trying to figure out how to read it so everybody understands how I mean it. I'm not as an eloquent speaker as the rest of you. I'm usually the quiet one. Um, so I want us to pause um, and put this proposal on, pause this proposal, this particular proposal um, 
of the grade level reconfiguration until fall of 2025. And I will add that we have conversations, continue to have conversations about um, what that reconfiguration will look like. With giving direction to the superintendent and the principals to stay true to our class sizes and what you know the the class sizes um, in each building, so we have equity and bring back the policy seven ninety eight, so we can. Um, <laughs> change that policy to um, adhere to the target sizes that we're trying to make for our elementary. All I want us to do is pause, talk, and figure it out. Uh, so what happens at the fall of 2025? I don't know. We'll have to come up with that plan. I think we can look at this this proposal, this reconfiguration, not necessarily the proposal, but I think we can I think we can reconfigure in a different way. I don't think it has to be this way, especially if we have so much um, turmoil to it. I had I had a handful of teachers come to me and say, I can agree with reconfiguration if I'm not going to reconfigure in two more years. If I know what a plan is, if I know what we're looking at, you know, down the road. So I don't know that it has to be this reconfiguration. But I think we should have that conversation. I think, and I know what Pete's saying about the task force. We've had, a, we had a referendum, Carl, you maybe were on that. The referendum where we didn't go with the task force. No, we were oh, no, but no, no, that, that brought me to the board, not to. Oh, okay. If you want to put it that way. And we didn't go with, but that was a recommendation. That wasn't ideas. That was a recommendation. And we didn't go with it. And that failed. If this last referendum would have passed, we wouldn't be having this conversation about our elementary buildings. Director Spoke, emailed with uh, administration. I'm looking at a document entitled WAPS 2023-24 Task Force Concept. That document is part of our mm -hmm. board minutes from February, mm -hmm. early February meeting. Mm -hmm. I see idea A and I see ID, idea B. And then we talk, task force talks about benefits and risks. Mm -hmm. Help me understand how that reflects anything that we're talking here. Because it, there's almost zero similarity between any of the things that we've talked about for the past half hour and what was brought forward by a task force of several people. Idea B looks nothing like what we're talking. So I, I'm concerned if we're going to vote on a, on a proposal, which we need to, and we need to vote. And if it comes to call and the question, I'm willing to do that. But I don't want, I don't think it's, it is. Um, untrue for us to say that what we're talking about reflects anything in this document that is in our very own <coughs> this is a document produced by that group. And so I think it's very important that we be as crystal clear and transparent with that as possible. Um, and so I, again, very concerned. We, for lack of a better term, we are managers in a market and our market are students and their parents and their families. And we are making it more cloudy and more difficult to understand no market likes that. Markets like certainty and understanding. And we are creating the opposite of that right now. And that is not good for our district. So I really um, would ask this group, if we're going to call it a question on, on a vote, let's do that. And then from there, move forward. But to try to mold in, this is saying things like our task force is somewhat a part of this. That's simply not true. I'm, I'm looking at the Unless there's a document I'm not aware of, the document I'm looking at looks nothing like any of the proposals that we're talking about. And I, I would defer to the superintendent Brzezinski. I may be missing something, but I feel our 
uh, digital conversation on this is pretty clear, and I, I think this document is pretty clear. Any other comments right now? Casey, do you have what you need for amendment? I'll have to listen back. Okay. There's not any other questions. We're going to vote on the amendment first. And the amendment is again to pause until 2025 to give the superintendent and three um, elementary principals direction to combine, find ways to make sure that our class size, our targets are met um, and not um, too small or too big, basically, and bring back policy 798 to the next board meeting so that, that we can address the boundaries and make sure that our families um, understand that the district really will say we can't have another student in this building or this class because it is too big. Um, there's some wordage that I'm going to defer to Director Hanratty and Director Smith on uh, policy 798 to make sure that that's cleaned up for next time. Um, and right now, that's what we're voting on is only the amendment. Um, one last question, Director Schultz. Yeah, uh, Chair, as a point of clarification, I'd like to ask you a question. Um, you you say the amendment asks us tells says that we are going to pause until fall of twenty twenty five. Could you please tell me what we are pausing? We're pausing on the implementation of this proposal. I mean, that's what we're pausing on because that's the proposal that's in front of us. So we're pausing on the proposal. I Director Sano. You need to be careful with the word implementation because that's what the rub between, you know, it's a the proposal would not be accepted for implementation as I understand it. It remains on the table for discussion. And that's what I've heard back and forth and thought we we're at. It's, <laughs> That and a number of other things can be discussed, but there's no implementation of it unless we take further action. You still are going to have to take further action at some point. Oh, I mean, and you I, know that. I know the, the details of it, too. Yes. But right now Clear. we're voting on an amendment uh, before we do anything else. <clears throat> Any other clarifying questions? We've got the amendment. We need to vote on it. We're taking a voice voice vote, please. Carl Sonneman? Yes. Michael Hanrady? Yes. Pete Watkins? No. Tina Leonards? Yes. Stephanie Smith? Um, I'm on pause because I'm still confused. I feel like we went back and forth four times. With a order chip, is it? It's a vote. I'm sorry, Stephanie. Then I have to say no. Jim Shul? Yes. Nancy Denzer? Yes. And then to back up, because we have to vote on the proposal with the amendment impeached. So this is the proposal. The amendment has been approved. So now we're going back to the original motion from Director Hanratty to approve the um, proposal. When voted. Director Simon. I think that the, as I understand the amendment, the amendment, the amendment replaces the motion for the proposal. We still have to vote on the first. No, I agree, but we have to vote on that. Yeah. But the original proposal, the amendment to accept the proposal is no longer. It's existing. the proposal with the amendment. That's what we're voting on. With the additional language incorporated. Yeah. Uh, point of order. That isn't what I understood. That's what we. Um, Casey and I have checked on this a number of times. So that is what we are doing based on uh, the rules that we know before us. So the amendment has passed. We need to vote on the proposal, including the language with the amendment. All right. So I don't know what your question my, is. My, my problem is that that compels me to vote no because I'm opposed to the proposal. Me too. Yeah. But the proposal now has the amendment. It doesn't attached. change the proposal, though. That's the problem. That's why I said that the amendment, as I understood it, was to replace 
the motion the motion to adopt the proposal so the proposal is now gone and we just have the amendment that's my understanding of it now if you're telling me it's not correct then i then my vote is clear i know what i'll vote casey my understanding of it is that we are adding language before and after the original motion language to change it to the language that was listed in the amendment Right. The original proposal said we were going to do it now, like right now. Well, you know. And that's what the amendment has changed. It's taking the pause. It's adding the class sizes, the targets, uh, and it's giving us policy 798. So we have to vote on the original motion because that's what was presented okay. to us. So we have that, to do that. But the, but the original motion, is, as it was stated, doesn't exist. This is what my point is. Well, and that's the problem that you're causing for me and forcing me to vote no. Then. That's all I'm telling you. That as if it's as you say, then I will vote no. Because I I think it's left in a form that approves the original approves the proposal, but delays it. That's back to Director Hanratty's statement about yeah, it it's delaying the implementation. And there should be no, I mean, my view is there should be no implementation. The amendment does that. Yeah, I would agree that if we were to pass this amendment, that the current uh, proposal was uh, K, uh, pre K through K at, uh, at Goodview, one and two at WK, three and four at Jefferson. That proposal has been changed through the amendment. Uh, the word implementation was not included in the uh, in the motion or in the uh, the amendment. Uh, what, how I interpret it is that this this proposal, as I made motion on, would not be occurring at the fall of twenty twenty five. Uh, uh, but the, the current conversation will keep happening. The, I just want to be sure this is getting pretty important, but. You, as I heard you understand to say it would not be implemented according to the motion as it now stands. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would clear up for me. That's how our amendments have always worked at yep. the board table. Right, you have to do both. Uh, I'm not so sure. But... We try to check back and make sure that we're doing it the right way. Director Smith. So the way that Tina said it, is that we're pausing the proposal. So we're leaving it as a proposal for the grade level reconfiguration until fall of 2025 and continue to have conversations on what would look like. And then, um, and the superintendent and principals in the meantime would adhere to target sizes and keep working um, within elementary schools, move students within schools if they need to combine classes if they have to or move staff whatever needs to be done and that we would bring back board policy 798 at the april 4th meeting mm -hmm. so that it can be edited but we are not if we are voting yes we are not confirming that this pre-k k wk two grades jefferson two grades we are not saying that that's what's being paused until 2025. What we're saying is the talk of the reconfiguration and the conversations are what's on pause. We we want the talks to continue throughout the year, but we want that conversation to come back in the fall. Is that well, we don't want it to come back in the fall. We want it to come back way before that. Well, so that we don't hear that we don't have enough time because that's what we're hearing right now. But we're saying like, like that's the full swing. Like that it's essentially coming back to us, but as something else, once we're able to have the conversations with the people in the community and the teachers that the staff with the staff that doesn't want this the way that it is right now. Right? Well, the staff. Well, the staff. Because yeah. I want to make sure that I'm voting the right way. Well, you can't tell you how to vote. Well, <laughs> in my head, the right way. I know. Because if if we're implementing this as of fall 2025, if nothing else has come forward, then that's not what I'm agreeing to. 
And I just want to make sure that that's on the record. That's, that's a lot of conversations that would have to happen. And votes. Many, many. Yeah, I mean, that, that we would not implement without a up and down vote. Mm -hmm. It has to come out. Well, I, you know that. It has well, to. I'm not so sure that I like the way some of it. Well, all right. We have um, now we're voting we on the original motion, and it's a voice, voice vote again. So, <clears throat> Oh, I'm confused. So the original motion is put on pause because of the amendment. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have conversation. Sure, no, sure. Sorry, Director Hanratty, then Director Schultz. Mr. Brzezinski, do you do you understand the intent of the proposal? I do. Yeah, and and again, if if I can just say that, if we're looking at in implementation of fall of 2025 or beyond. Again, I would strongly encourage the board not to tie our hands to a particular proposal. I'm hearing the voices across the across the, the, the table here tonight. And that we have the opportunity to more fully address the various ideas that have surfaced over the last couple of months. So we have the opportunity to more seriously vet the proposal and other proposals that might that might surface. And frankly, more fully engage with our with our stakeholders uh, around what a reconfiguration might ultimately look like for one of your public schools. Chair Denzer, um, <clears throat> the interpretations I've heard from you would signal we are doing something fall of 2025. Mm -hmm. A specific something fall of 2025. Mm -hmm. What I am hearing from several of my board colleagues and our superintendent signals to me that this vote means absolutely nothing. I'm what is it we're going to keep talking? Well, then why do anything right now? I, it, it is so unclear to me. Every one of us will be walking out of this room with a different interpretation, and that's not good practice. That's not good practice. Superintendent just said it um, very clearly. We would ask, the, I mean, we already passed the amendments, which says we're putting it on pause. Our elementary class sizes will have to be target sizes met um, and adhered to, and whatever that looks like will be directed by the superintendent and policy 798 will come back to us. That's clear, I think, to, to people. I don't know what's unclear about those three things. So I um, apologize if it nope. still is unclear. The, I need a definition of it. You said put it on pause, follow 25. What's it? Proposal. This, this proposal, proposal before us is on pause. It is on pause right now. Fall of 2025. So does that mean we will implement this in the fall of 2025? It <laughs> It means, as many people have said, we need to have many conversations. Our first conversation, and I don't, I'm not going to put the superintendent on the spot. I can do this, you know, from conversations that we have had. We know we need to do something, and that something is to right size our elementary class sizes right now. That's where this all started to begin with is equity, collaboration, and making sure that our students all have the same educational opportunity. And right now they don't. So that's where this, this is where this all started way back when we brought the task force. And that's, you know, that's how this conversation started. The board has not ever had this conversation. So it is difficult, very difficult. But we're having it because that's our responsibility to the community. 
Derek Schultz. So when the public asks me what happens, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell them we're going to keep talking. Because nothing's happened tonight. Nothing's happened tonight. And that needs to be clear. We can't walk out of here thinking something has happened tonight, and then in a year, someone, for instance, our, our my colleague, Director Sonneman, has the wool pulled over his eyes and says, we're doing this, and he doesn't think we're doing that, and he supported something. We can't do that. So I wanted to be clear, we are just talking, and we're voting on just talking. That's my understanding. And that's not true. I don't know how to make it more clear right now. We put the we already put the proposal on hold by vote, by voice vote. And now we're voting on the original motion. So I it isn't that we're gonna we've just been talking, we've been having conversations about what to do. And this is what we're doing right now. Director Hanneman. I think what could have solved, I feel like we're doing an after action review here. I think what could have solved it is if the original motion was uh, voted down and a new motion was created, the Senate mm -hmm. amendment was made that basically strikes down the, the current uh, motion. But we still have the original motion that we have to vote on based on our rules of order. Right. And that's, we, we didn't do it that way. Um, we could have, but we didn't. Right. This is the way we're doing it because this way it works too. It just has yeah. a different feel. Director Sonneman. Yeah, I want to make it real clear. I do see us doing something. We are directing the superintendent to make certain that. We are directing that the uh, uh, boundary issue be brought before us at the next meeting with the intent for action. Um, I think I'm missing one more thing in there. Class size. Class size. And we're directing <laughs> class sizes be organized in a particular fashion. And, and I want to be real clear for anybody listening that that's action. The discussion that go is that goes to other points and larger points, including the task force, uh, right, you know, is to be continued and carried on. We don't always bring these things regularly before the board. And I'm expecting over the next 12 months that it will be routinely part of uh, board agendas and we will be having this, these arguments in some fashion uh, regularly, which we don't usually do. That I mean, I don't mean to restate your proposal, but that's kind of what I thought I heard and understood. Any other comments? Just as a point of clarification, in approving the amendment, we're approving the language change for the original motion. So we're not necessarily approving that language, we're approving that change to the language in voting on the original motion, we're voting on that language. Mm -hmm. Say it again. In approving the amendment, we're approving the change in the language to the original motion. We're not voting on that, on approving that specific language as an action. We're approving to change that language of the original motion. Now, in going back, we would be voting on that. Maybe I'll confuse you further. So if we, sorry, if we vote no against the original motion, we're voting no against the amendment. The amended language. You're voting against the amendment that we just approved. Okay. Anyways. So we vote, yes, we're only voting for the amended language and not the original motion because the original motion language is not there. Yes. Let's take a vote. <laughs> Casey, please. Michael Hanratty? Yes. Stephanie Smith? Yes. Pete Watkins? Emphatic no. Tina Lennox? Yes. 
Carl Sonneman. Yes. Jim Shul. Yes. Nancy Denzer. Yes. It is 8.16. We are going to take a five-minute break and come back.
her coats here and her purse. So 826, I don't think she left. <laughs> Next on our agenda is the superintendent mid-year evaluation report. And that report is available. It's on board docs right now. I'm going to highlight just a few things from our closed meeting conversation. Um, and then this will go into Superintendent Brzezinski's uh, personnel file. It's not an action item. It's just information. But the board did meet in closed session on 229-24 to discuss Superintendent Brzezinski um, mid-year evaluation. Um, and to highlight a few things, I asked the board to consider two things, you know, given established goals and quarterly reports um, provided by the superintendent. What are two, one or two highlights or observations? And the other is focused on the goals and their feedback you'd like to have considered as the year continues. So um, that first question, you know, most board members, if not all board members saw um, a pattern of partnerships with the community and that that was a strength that, you know, superintendent is uh, very approachable and he has a desire to support the district's future. Um, question two was more, um, you know, just feedback, you know, moving forward. And, you know, a couple of things there, it's the, you know, that he building a strong and capable team of leaders that work cooperatively, that's the encouragement and that um, we develop a system for you know, continuous improvement and complete the audit. Um, so those are just a few things that um, we discussed in closed session, and I'm just gonna have it put in your personnel file because you're the human resource. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in there. Yes, thank you very much for doing that. Um, and then next on the agenda, is superintendent goal update. I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Yeah, thank you. First of all, just a, a comment, just to appreciate the conversation we had in closed session last uh, last time around and appreciate the uh, the summary document there. So I'm gonna keep my uh, March goal update fairly brief here. I'll just highlight uh, one or two items under each goal area. Uh, goal number one, um, as was just noted by Chair Denzer, a, a continued focus on developing the uh, a new evaluation structure for our district directors and principals. I'm going to prioritize that work uh, through the remaining months of this year. Uh, goal number two, Chair Denzer and I are registered for the uh, MSBA phases three and four training. Uh, I think uh, that's coming up here in about a about a month or so. We'll start uh, the sequence of those two. And uh, and again, uh, continue to work on just really how our current, uh, current work as a district aligns with the strategic plan and continuing to weed out those uh, activities that maybe don't have direct alignment with what we've prioritized um, as a district. Goal number three, uh, continued work in each of the three uh, areas noted there, our MTSS uh, implementation. We have a tier one work group. I mentioned this last month, uh, focused on the development of an instructional framework. I'm excited about uh, the, the potential for that uh, as, a, as a foundational structure for us moving forward. Uh, on, on the AVID front, we recently had our leadership team attend the AVID uh, district leadership training and currently uh, collecting names uh, for, for staff interested in the Summer Institute. We've had a long history of really since uh, seven, eight, nine years ago when we, we started to uh, start our implementation of AVID as a district, we've always had a strong contingent of staff uh, be able to attend the Summer Institute. And that's a really strong professional development. And then lastly, the Rios work obviously has been a topic of several board meetings uh, here recently, and that implementation work uh, continues. Goal number four, uh, obviously the budgeting process is well underway for fiscal year 25. Uh, and I would just say there's a longer term component outlined in, in goal number four there as well. And I think the, the, the budget conversations that we're having now are certainly against that uh, backdrop of our the longer term financial health of the school district as well. And then goal number five, I'll just update. Uh, I, I put a few updated um, connections at the bottom of the uh, the gold document. I'll highlight two actually from today, which were kind of a nice nice way to spend my afternoon. Um, first visited Minnesota State College Southeast. They did a rebranding launch um, today. They unveiled a, unveiled a new logo and and uh, just just some direction for for their organization. Was happy to be able to take part in that uh, that event this afternoon, and then uh, traveled to. A 
Arizona State University this afternoon where they actually recognized President uh, Kenneth Jans. He's been an interim role for the for this uh, for this school year. And uh, as of yesterday, the announcement was made that uh, he is the the WSU president without the interim label. So congratulations to uh, to President Jans. Had a nice opportunity to uh, to visit with with he and others at Winona State this afternoon. All right, thank you. Next on our agenda, this is information as well. Director Slavi, 2025 budget development timeline. Just some updated dates, I believe. Yes, there's a few updates um, that I wanted to bring your attention to. Um, I added uh, briefing and action uh, items regarding the building reconfiguration configuration since that is directly impacting the budget uh, decisions for this budget cycle. I also added uh, recommendation briefing and action for several of, of the um, funds, which can be discussed ahead of the general fund, um, thinking that that's uh, information that can be shared with the board ahead of time, with the community ahead of time, so that it um, can more easily be absorbed. Um, we can maybe have more of a discussion about those funds rather than um, kind of being on information overload when we're talking about the general fund and, and having that presentation in May. Um, so added the debt service, uh, OPEB debt service fund um, 47 for March and April, regular debt service fund seven for April and May after the bond sale for the geothermal is final and school nutrition fund two for April and May. Any questions on? Any of that? Honey, do you have any to then? All right, and then the next one is an action item, and this is some um, information we have seen before at the last board meeting that supply and material um, site allocation money. Is there any additions from the first time you gave it to us? No, it's the exact same information, and I have not received any questions on this since the last meeting. I move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? We have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <laughs> Just been curious. And then next, thank you, is um, OPEB debt service budget. Yes, yeah, so there's an agenda item 8A. Um, and bringing the budget for the district's OPEB debt service. Um, nothing in this budget will change between now and May. Mm -hmm. So there's really no reason not to get it in front of the board now and kind of check it off the list for the year. Um, the revenue is uh, most most directly related to the um, levy that was approved by the board back in December. So the total levies and state aids budgeted uh, total $659,000. If you were to pull up the levy document that the board approved back in December, that dollar amount will tie directly to that levy document. Um, the local revenues is simply the estimated interest that we're ex expecting to see for the year. Expenditures expenditures budgeted are six hundred and about fifty nine thousand for twenty twenty five and are broken down as five hundred seventy thousand for principal, uh, about eighty nine thousand for interest and five hundred dollars for paying agent fees. Um, the debt schedule has also been attached for this um, debt. Uh, there, the debt schedule has also been attached so you can see what the future um, principal and interest payments are going to be. You can see that this one goes out until 2029. Um, in total, the debt service, OPEB debt service fund is, is expected to grow approximately $6,600 in fiscal year 2025 to a total fund balance of, of just over 151,000. Um, do keep in mind that this is just the debt service fund related to the OPEB. This is not um, fund 45, which is the actual expenditures that go through the trust. Um, that's something that we will discuss at a later date. Any questions on fund 47? <laughs> Um, this is a briefing item. It will come back at the next board meeting for action. And just to point this out, we talked about this at the finance meeting. Um, once the board takes action on this particular item, 
it will be, it is part of our budget. Correct. And what, um, and this is different than what we've done before. Generally, when we get close to approving the budget in June, Director Slavi will sit down with the book and give us all the information. We're still gonna have the book and all the information, but we will, as, as we can, be approving things that we don't need to spend that much time on when it comes time to the briefing. So it's a matter of, you know, shifting a little bit of how we see how we do the budget um, and that we're going to be somewhat voting on the budget in piecemeal. Right. That makes sense. Right. Um, so when we do this, we're going to, you know, I'm going to ask every board member once we take action on OPEP that we, keep that document um, and you know have it available in our binder with binder um, with the budget but you know to somehow what however you do your own record keeping that we've approved that um, and we won't be approving it again until we get the whole budget we'll approve the whole budget at once so exactly it's kind of a double approval but Right. It'll all be included in the budget book. And actually, after our discussion at the finance committee um, meeting, one thought that I had was um, it perhaps it would be helpful for the um, board to have a table of contents. You know, I, I have a table of contents that I put together for the budget book. You know, we could I could put something together, you know, based loosely off of the table of contents so that we could um have a date that that was presented, date that was approved, so that you had some sort of a checklist mm -hmm. of when those different components had come to the board, just to kind of, you know, keep tabs on where we're at, you know, which pieces are yet to come before the board. If people uh, do, as you think about this, if you, you know, if you think about the way we've done it, we're shifting a little bit, so I just want to be clear on what that means. So you may have a question, you know, that comes to your mind about, you know, what's helpful for you? Because that was, you know, I don't want to have more work for Director Slavi. Um, that's not, you know, efficient for her if it's not going to help us. Right. So that's what we're talking about here. No. And ultimately, the goal of this is so that you all aren't on information overload. Mm -hmm. You know, my goal is that um, you're kind of set this information, um, you know, one fund at a time. So you've got some time to digest it. And if you, you know, have questions, by all means, let me know. Anything else? Uh, nope, we'll see it next time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next on our list is the notice of termination of the non-renewals. Superintendent Brzezinski, before we read um, the resolution that's required with this, is there any other comments you want to make just about the how does this work? Yeah, absolutely. So just, just in terms of the, the staff names that appear on this list really fit into one of two categories. Uh, it is either staff that are on a tier one license, which by state statute, we're required to repost that position each year, um, or they're potentially on an out of field permission, again, not fully licensed uh, to be in the role that they're in right now. Uh, or the second category is staff that are being displaced as part of the budget adjustment process, uh, as we continue to work through that, we do need to uh, create create uh, some, some space, if you will, for the budget adjustments that, uh, that we're working through right now. Um, this is an action item tonight, and I would like a volunteer to read the resolution, please. I don't see anybody jumping at the chance to read a resolution, but I lost you lost it. All right, Director Hanratty, would you read the resolution? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, as the following employees and probationary teachers in independent school district number 0861, be it resolved by the school board of independent district number 0861 that pursuant to Minnesota statute 122A.40 subdivision 5 and the Winona Education Association, Education Minnesota Master Agreement the teacher co teaching contracts of the following probationary employees at independent school district number 0861 shall be non-renewed at the end of the 2023-2024 school year, effective June 7th, 2024. Angie Borgen, Washington Kosciuszko Elementary, 1.0 FTE, 2.0 FTE. Madison Brown, Goodview Early Childhood, 
1.0 FTE to 0 FTE. Philip Johnson, Winona Senior High School, 0.5 FTE to 0 FTE. Gretchen Larson, Washington Kachusco Elementary School, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Jennifer Miller, Jefferson Elementary, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Jody Watterson, Washington Kachusco Elementary and Early Childhood, 0.9 FTE to 0 FTE. Patricia Norman, Washington Kosciuszko Early Childhood, 0.35 FTE to 0 FTE. Coy Peterson, Winona Senior High School, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Allison Parzinski, Winona Senior High School, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Tina Roloff, Winona Middle School, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Gino Storner, Winona Senior High School, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Amy Triton, Winona Middle School, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Emily Wahlberg, Jefferson Elementary, 1 FTE. FTE to 0 FTE. Laura Walker, Washington Christian School Elementary, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Allison Witt, Winona Senior High School, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Olivia Zill, Winona Senior High School, 1 FTE to 0 FTE. Be it further resolved that the written notice be sent to said teacher regarding the non renewal of the teacher's contract. This is the motion made by um, Director Hanratty. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Director Sonneman. Yeah, the question I have for the superintendent is, to what extent will retirements, or, or possibly other factors, affect uh, whether any of these persons would be hired back? And when would that be? Yeah, certainly as retirements, uh, come in, those are taken into consideration in terms of uh, staffing for next year, as any other resignations, et cetera, would come in, those would all be taken into effect. And uh, obviously, as, as as positions are available again, certainly uh, folks on this list and, and applicants would be eligible to be considered for those positions. I hate to ask this question, but I realize I'm not asking people before. And, um, It, I mean, this process let it, you know essentially comes out of statute. So, are we giving notice to more uh, staff positions here than ultimately will be uh, adjusted for in the budget? Possibly, the unknown on that is we don't know. Will there be additional retirements? Will there be additional resignations, etc.? You know, there's really no deadline for those kinds of notices to come in. So. As of March 21st, this is our best staffing estimate right now to create that space that we need. But certainly those factors may shift between now and, and you know, the end of the school year, for example. Yes, part of it is my recollection of the staffing seems that this is greater than the reduction in staffing that we had been looking at in the budget. But well. You have to remember, though, through the budget adjustment process, there may be individuals that are currently tenured in a in a more senior role may have to bump into a, a, a different position. Yeah, and I'm thinking in just gross numbers, not individual. Well, again, our, yeah, numbers, right. absolutely. No, and, and to, to that point, frankly, the majority of this list are folks that are tier one or out of field permission. So these are not necessarily representative of positions cut these are some of these are mandated by that that function of them being out of their license area oh, okay. they have to be non-renewed and that position has to be reposted and that's that explains a lot and we don't see it here correct yes yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah thank I, you for that for that and, question and thank you yeah no, i took a little long for... to get to get to the answer but i, I understood <laughs> for that answer there. because yeah. that makes it clearer what's what's going on yeah. because it's not distinct it doesn't distinct right yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second to um, approve this resolution. Could you do roll, roll call, please? Stephanie Smith? Yes. Carl Sonneman? Yes. Tina Lennertz? Yes. Pete Watkins? Yes. Michael Hanready? Yes. Jim Schull? Yes. Nancy Denzer? Yes. Okay, thank you. Enrollment update? I'll keep it very brief here tonight. Continued uh, stability within our 
K through 12 enrollment uh, currently sitting at 2,367 students. And again, as you look back at the, the previous reports, we have, we've been very consistent at that level. Any questions? All right, next on our list is a uh, resolution again. Director Simon, you want to read this one? Fine. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, let's get to the top. Whereas Minnesota statutes, uh, section 123B.02, subdivision six provides, the board may receive for the benefit of the district bequests, donations, and gifts for any proper purpose and apply the same to the purpose designated. In that behalf, the board may act as trustee of any trust created for the benefit of the district or for the benefit of pupils thereof, including trust created to provide pupils of the district with advanced education after completion of high school in the advancement of education. And whereas Minnesota statute section 465.03 provides any city, county, school district, or town may accept a grant or devise a real or personal property and maintain such property for the benefit of its citizens in accordance with the terms prescribed by the donor. Nothing herein shall authorize such acceptance or use for religious or sectarian purposes. Every such acceptance shall be by resolution of the governing body adopted by two thirds majority of its members expressing such terms in full. And whereas, Every such acceptance shall be by resolution of the governing body adopted by a three-thirds majority of its members expressing such terms in full. Therefore, be it resolved that the board of school, excuse me, the school board of Winona Area Public Schools, ISD number 861, gratefully accepts the following donations as identified below. Is there a second? Thank you. Superintendent Kosinski. From the Fraternal Order of Eagles, number 1243, $1,000 to the WSHS Physical Education Department. Uh, William Miller Scrap Iron and Metal, $100 to the TRAP team. RTP Company, $500 to the TRAP team. Uh, Robert Kierlin and Mary Bierichter, Beer, uh, $300 to Project Compass. Uh, a series here all to the TRAP team. Sunshine Refuse, $100. Heart Country LLC, $100. Benedict Sales and Services, $50. River City Manufacturing and Machine Company, $100. WNB Financial, $100. The Shed, $100. Northland Breaks LLC, $100. Brett Schmidt, $100. Uh, Minnesota State Fair, $600 to the marching band. Merchants Bank, $100 to the marching band. UW Lacrosse, $399.61 for a cooperating teacher appreciation grant. Goodview PTA, $509.24. Minnesota Conservatory for the Arts Field Trip and Staff Expenses. Midwest Design and Construction, $100 to the TRAP team. TNT Sales, $100 to the TRAP team. Winona County Old Settlers Association, $500 to the FFA. Winona FFA Alumni, $1,496.50 to the FFA. Uh, WAPS Foundation, $2,483.90 for Miller Academic Mentoring Space Lease. And again, the foundation, $733.85 uh, to Herb Hulkren, WMS uh, Music Purchase, WK Snack Cart, and batteries for the w, WMS uh, Science, and lastly, SIPA. Uh, WAPS Foundation, $23,752.39 for Miller Mentor in January costs, and Minnesota State College Southeast, $750 uh, to support the industrial tech visit for a total of $34,175.49. Thank you. Can we have roll call, please, Casey? Tina Lenners? Yes. Michael Hanready? Yes. Pete Watkins? Abstain. Stephanie Smith? Yes. Carl Sonneman? Yes. Jim Schul? Yes, and thank you. Nancy Denzer? Yes. Uh, next on our list are board reports. These are um, on board docs for people <laughs> to review them um, when they are able to. There's committee meetings. There's also school board committee meetings. All of them that have happened are the February meetings that are on this list. And then um, I'll turn it back over to the superintendent for important events. Yeah, thank you. First, I, I want to recognize today is uh, World Down Syndrome Day, uh, a day to promote awareness for the rights, inclusion, and well-being of people with Down syndrome. Uh, our WSHS band hit the road here uh, several hours ago now on their way to Florida. Uh, there'll be, uh, I'm sure, a, a, a long bus trip ahead, but uh, they're, they're going to get out ahead uh, any winter weather, and uh, hopefully they have a, a, a great, uh, great week in Florida. Uh, March 22nd, tomorrow, there's a, a middle school 
Carnival from 5 to 6.30 p.m. March 28th and, uh, is the end of our third quarter. Uh, no school on Friday, March 29th and Monday, April 1st. Uh, we have kindergarten open house events scheduled for Monday, April 1st. Our April regular school board meetings will be April 4th and 18th. And we have an April 6th event at the middle school, uh, summer kickoff and family fun event, 9 a.m. until noon. Thank you. Um, next on our list is board feedback. Thank you. Future agenda items. Um, let's start with Adele. Um, well, Molly Apicelli is going to be a physical therapist, and I believe I know her personally. And she's a great person. I'm also really excited for the idea of a physical therapist um, as a school thing because I know, like, I've never even heard of that being a thing. Everyone just goes to like sport and spine and stuff like that. So um, I also want to thank Tom Sandvik. I don't know if you guys know, but he came in to fill the gym spot that was needed when he was just called on a whim and he's been trying to make that work while coaching collegiate tennis. He also has been running all captain's practices <laughs> for the boys and getting them balls, resources, all that sort of thing. Um, and snow day calculator tomorrow's 50%. Just <laughs> it's that low, huh? All right. <laughs> and last thing, uh, in our future talks about reconfiguration and things like that, I want to emphasize that students are not unintelligent. We know what's going on. We understand this. We hear things from our teachers. Don't leave the student voice out of this either. I would like, I don't know what the best way of doing that is. I surveys, meetings, something like that. But I can tell you, we know what's going on. And a lot of us have thought about it. A lot of people know this board meeting happened tonight, even as students, you know, which you don't always think about happening, but we, we know, but I just want to emphasize that. So thank you. Thank you. Director Henry. Yeah, I, I, uh, the only thing I have to add is when then we had the conversation. I don't think we grant uh, coming up uh, with the proposal. Um, you, you know, uh, I think the, the apple cart has been shaken. Uh, we know that uh, that something needs to be uh, happening, and uh, it's now been ordered by the board to have something be happening. So I appreciate all my board colleagues. And uh, I'll leave it at that today. Thank you, Dick. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, it is fantastic news that we're going to uh, hiring our own physical therapist. Thank you, Superintendent Brzezinski. Um, I'd like to thank Bill Braun for your work with the robotics team. That was wonderful. Um, and um, I want to give a special shout out to um, Debbie Bobinet. Bobinet. Uh, she's an education assistant at WK. Uh, she is an absolutely wonderful employee here. Uh, Debbie, there just aren't enough good words or words good enough to describe you. Thank you. Thank you, Dick Rockins. Yes. Um, events of this evening obviously merit discussion, and I know we'll keep discussing, um, but I'm going to use this platform. Um, we, as a group of seven, asked our school district to convene a group of community members, taxpayers, teachers, parents. We can put a lot of different labels on the folks that were in that room. But most of all, these are people that wanted to be engaged, no pun intended, uh, that we used Engage Winona. These are people that volunteered. They showed up. They chose to do that over other things. It's really uh, disappointing, concerning to me um, that we are failing to acknowledge the very base plan that they came up with that they provided that is not even making our discussions. Maybe it will in the future, and I'm very hopeful of that. And I will formally ask that that does happen in terms of a future agenda item. Um, but here's the larger context of this discussion, purely from my standpoint. We are elected by our constituents to listen to them and to represent them. They did not elect, I believe, they did not elect us to think for them. And what I heard tonight is a group of seven, a group of six, excuse me, trying to at times think for the people that elected them. And I don't think that is what we're here to do. Um, I would ask this, and, and Adali, I appreciate you bringing the student voice. I would ask you specifically, as you watch tonight, would it matter? Would, would we listen to the students any more than we listen to the 40 people we brought together in a task force? 
evidence in the case and all we would, and that's really the concern. Um, we're making a mistake by not listening to our task force in this way in particular. If we're going to ask people to get together, spend time and do that, and then just dismiss what they do, the ripple effect of that is large. Take 35 people that now feel they're not listened to, that 35 turns into 110 and to 500 and to 1,000 very quickly. And for us, if we were to sit here and say that we have a better plan or a better idea individually than that group, I think we're making a big mistake, and that's concerning. Part of the reason we're in this position we're in is because we chose to invest a large amount of money in buildings that were built in the 30s, and we were receiving emails about smells in schools. Not a shocker. These are old buildings. I don't know that it makes sense for us as a board to keep the, the subject will change, but the result is the same. We're losing confidence from people in our community, and they're, I mean, tonight, it was it was word salad. People walked out of here more confused than when they walked in, and that's bad for us. I really, I have deep concerns on that. So I know myself as a board member, I'm going to continue to advocate for um, our students and our families in the way that they tell me they want us to. And I'm never going to put myself above their opinion or above what they tell us because they elect us. And I think that's important if we don't lose task on that. As I said earlier, I deeply appreciate the fact that Chair Denzer and uh, Director Hanratty brought something forward because we do need to do something. It turned out not to be the thing we needed to do, um, but let's not get so full of ourselves that we think as a group of seven that we can outsmart our district because that is not a spot that we want to be in and I'm concerned that we're doing that. So thanks for hearing me out. Um, I would agree with Director Hanratty. I appreciate the discussion, even if I don't agree with the outcome tonight. Um, and uh, let's reconvene in a way that moves us forward. And uh, more, more than ever, I'm deeply appreciative of Brad and his work. Thank you. Director Lennox, perhaps. Director Smith, um, I would like to thank all of the staff, um, the parents and the community members that have reached out to me over the last few weeks, um, whether it be just your ideas or to share your thoughts and feelings about the suggested change. Um, your input is essential for us as board members. And um, if I didn't get a chance to personally thank you when I chatted with you over the phone, through text, in person, or through email, I do want you to know that um, I not only heard you talking, but I was listening to what you were saying and honestly can't thank you enough for your time. Um, I'd also like to thank all the staff that's retiring this year. Um, we appreciate your dedication to an own area public schools. And a special shout out to Ms. Mullen. Um, she was actually one of my teachers. So thank you for being a teacher that helped inspire your students, myself included. Um, the You already talked about the band students going to Florida. I hope they have a really good time and I can't wait to see videos of them marching. Um, I know that Mr. Gleason's been in a couple and it's always exciting to see the fun things that he does on the side. So I'm curious to watch that. Um, only have one event for you guys, and that's Saturday, March 30th from 1 to 3 p.m. There's a kids' Easter party at the Winona Athletic Club. You um, do have to sign your child up by calling 507-452-8390, and the deadline to do that is next Thursday, March 28th. I'm assuming that's to make sure they have enough eggs. Wouldn't want anybody to be left out. So um, that's all that I have for you tonight. Thank you, Director Simon. Um, the basketball season is over, but uh, an event happened this year that I think uh, deserves uh, recognition here. Um, Jackson Harvey, uh, who has played for the Wind Hawks for several years, scored 47 points in a game about uh, probably about a month and a half, two months ago. That is the all time high record for a Winona High School uh, basketball player. Um, Amy Stever has the record uh, for the uh, on the girls' side at 42. And most particularly, I think uh, Jackson's accomplishment is quite, <laughs> quite um, notable because the person he passed is Alec Brown. Alec Brown is the one NBA draftee that we have sent from our program here. But I also want to recognize the, the person who held the record for 40 years until Alec broke it. And that was a person named Steve Gilbertson. Uh, it's not the Steve Gilbertson you see in the agenda. 
uh, fortunately, because I have to report that I received news this week from our class uh, spreading the nude that Steve passed away in the last couple of weeks. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it all kind of ties together, I guess. Uh, but uh, records are, they always say records are made to be broken. And uh, probably someday Jackson's will be broken too, but it looks to me like it'll stand for a while. That's a pretty good number. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank all of the donations, the people that continue to support us in, in that way. So I appreciate that. Um, and a big thank you to board members who have spent a lot of time thinking and listening and talking to people and hearing what people said, responding to emails that we've received, talking to people in the grocery store and on the street corners or wherever else we're meeting with them. Um, these are tough discussions that we are having and appreciate the dialogue always. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. And a second. Yeah, All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.